Nope. 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 I don't want to hear it. Nope. I don't. Because you have plenty of time. Y'all have plenty of time. Nope. Nope. Save me. Save me. But you know what? We're going to help you last minute spirits out. Me and Joey, and me and Kai, all three of us, are going to help you get registered to vote. I mean, what you think I was talking about? Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to the Chris David Show. <laughs> I am your host, Chris David. Here to join us for our spring edition of the Chris David Show Guy Talk Men's Discussion Panel. Welcome back, our guys, Mr. Joey Bastin and Mr. Kai Thomas. Let's clap it up for them and give them, you know, that warm Chris David show welcome that only we can do. And hey, Joey, Kai, we back back. <laughs> but thank you both for being here. Now, listen, we got a lot to get to on this episode. We got some Ask the Guys questions. Thank you for sending those in. The news has been crazy lately, so we'll touch on some of that. Um, we're going to talk about Joey Black's TV pick. We got some Kai's knowledge. I'm going to drop some science, and we'll catch up and see what's been happening, you know, since we've been gone. I mean, a lot, obviously. Um, <laughs> good things, good things. But um, let's jump right in. Today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. Our upcoming election is Tuesday, November 5th. That means we have approximately 214 days until we elect the next president of the United States. At the time of this broadcast, quite a few states have already undergone primary elections. Primaries are important because they narrow down the many candidates of both parties to the two who will be running against one another in the November election. Now listen to me and listen to me good. The Chris David Show is not a politically based show. However, the Chris David Show is a show that informs and provides our audience with pertinent information to enrich their lives. Now I'm not gonna go in like I did last time. You're welcome. But voting is an integral part of the fabric of our culture. And my job is to emphasize how important it is for all of us to participate in one of our most fundamental practices. 214 days comes at you fast, so let's all do our big one. Visit vote.gov. There you'll find more information on how you can register to vote, find voter registration deadlines, check your registration, change your registration, and more. Once again, that site is it's a civic duty right i think sometimes no matter what your how you feel about your position here in the country america african american world returns as a citizen it's a right that we have and so to be my, my civic duty i'm a vote but i think it also goes back to the fact of this could be even felt it but there was a time where or we couldn't vote, right? And for all those that fought before us, imagine those seeing today and seeing like them just rolling over their graves because it's not being utilized. But I think honestly, it's a civic duty to protect the greater good, even if the greater good doesn't uh, in, like work for me. I may not be at certain tax brackets, I may not get the benefit of that, whatever, but the people who will benefit from whatever reason we vote. They still need that. And so for me to vote against self-interest versus do I believe in humanity? So it really is voting because I have the belief, you know, whatever, you, you know, conspiracy theories and behind the scenes that the government does this and that. I vote hopefully that something will make a change. You have national and local level. There's so many different types of voting and everything like that. So I vote on every different type of level just because I want to see the different changes um, in the community. Like one thing about it is that you don't have to like, if you're you're really not stuck in one place, usually if you have the means to go somewhere, you can go anywhere where you like enjoy the political situation there. If I don't like it in Pennsylvania here, I can always go back to New York. If I don't like New York's laws, I can go to Texas. And all of them, all three of those places have totally different laws and everything like that. So 
if you want to see changes on your local level or something like that, that's why you vote at your local level. If you want to like the, some of the changes that we want to see on a national level, that's something a little bit more intricate and a little bit more complicated. But you still vote for something that is going to continue to make your life where you are better. That's the whole point of it. And I mean, some of us have, you know, grandparents or great grandparents or in my case, parents who were alive during a time when black folks were legally allowed to vote. But you were, we were prevented from doing so. So, I mean, we as this generation, we just have a right to get out there and exercise our power at the polls to make a change. And I'm just blessed to have this platform where we're able to inform people and encourage them to do the right thing. So get out there and get registered to vote. Like, don't play in the future's face. That's it. Um, but anyway, Black Kina. <laughs> <laughs> What have you been up to? I heard you ran into uh, one of my doppelgangers, actually, uh, out at, out at uh, NSBE. Wait, what are your doppelgangers who? Malcolm Jamal Warner. People say I look like him. I don't see him, but people say I look like him. Uh, Malcolm and Eddie. I know Malcolm. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> but honestly, I think what I've been doing for myself, knowing that, it's getting nicer outside. I actually been trying to take care of my peace because we know when summer hits, it's going to be wild out here. So really, honestly, just trying to get things in protection routine so that way I have that structure back in my life. So I think the biggest thing, especially is don't catch up on sleep. Like really setting up a true regimen in like seven to nine hours of sleep but the streets be calling. So it's always tough to figure out always. how do I fit that in. Always. You know, one drink and a happy hour turns into, oh, we here? <laughs> but honestly just try to do the best right so that way because i look at it like we're already a, a quarter done with the year three months have gone by in 2024 and it seems that it's been the slowest fastest point in time next you know we're gonna be celebrating you know new year's and stuff and wonderful it's like what am i doing with the last nine months of the year and so that's what i'm trying to say we got to play around, the trial period's over, and now it's trying to get back at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel you, Kai. And Kai, your mom's doing good, right? Your mom's, your mom's doing well. Good. Mom's doing well. Right, you know, so health is a priority for her family, and her recovery is just a one. And so the help of other good. family members, her own self-will determination, she's where she needs to be. Awesome. Shout out to Kai's fam, by the way. Joey Black. Oh. Que lo que. Que lo que, loco. <laughs> I hear, I hear you've been, you been jet-setting on the uh, company credit card. So, yeah, we uh, have been. Uh, not not only in the, in the most responsible way. I want to say that, yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not doing the fraudulent funds because you could get fired for that. So uh, I'm on the up and up. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a straight and narrow. But yeah, everything's been good. Um, I'm on my, uh, we're on a little bit of a health journey. Um, we put down the alcohol for just a little bit, took a little break, and then uh, we're going to see what the, we're gonna see what the guns look like when, when we're all done after that. So so that's what the whole point of this is. So we feel good. Like you said, health is wealth. Health is the main priority. So definitely, definitely take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. And it's it's sad like that, but it is the, the hardest truth that I had to feel. Like um, my favorite saying is that no one's coming to save you. So I go on a plane every time and they say, make sure you put your seatbelts on and make sure you, if the, if the oxygen mask come on, make sure you do yours before helping somebody else. So you can't help anybody until you help yourself. So make sure that you're secure and good and then you can be able to help other people get secure and good also. Yo, I just got to say this. Everyone really enjoyed both of you on the last panel show we did. So I got excellent feedback. I'm happy we were able to get together again. And thank you both for riding with your boy. Um, as for me, I've been up to a lot, as you can see. The locks are gone. Oh no! <laughs> but the yeah, beard, the yeah, beard yeah, is the still beard in though. Yeah, the lock, the lock in the beard. I, I haven't I seen that. Before. Well, well, I took that out, but you know, it's a little puff going on right now. I mean, the beard is still bearding. You know, I'm just, I'm, I've been decluttering. I've been like all three of the three of us have been on kind of like the same journey, just like decluttering physically and mentally. You know, preparing ourselves for the next phase of life. You know, and that's what I'm doing. Preparing myself for, you know, where my career is going. You know, good, good things are going. Good things are going. Before I forget, we have an official drink for this episode of the Chris David Show Men's Discussion Panel. All right, Kai's got his somewhere. I got mine right here. Um, but but 
Joey, what's that drink? What's that drink for today? So we're going, uh, we're going with the hard stuff, guys. We're going old fashioned lemonade. Your, your famous three ingredients: the natural water, that good old uh, Domino sugar, and uh, the lemons that you get from the the local the local market. Put the three together, stir it up, then you have the magic that we call lemonade. Listen, here we go. And we got to put Joey on the spot really quick. Uh, Joey, six months sober, right? Six months? It's actually eight. So my last drink was July 28th of last year, of 2023. So I started uh, doing a gym regimen, and um, I was drinking a lot. Definitely was drinking a lot. So at that time, it was just like, what does it look like? Because um, I've seen a, I've seen some other, like, influencers and other guys like when they if they do something dramatic with their bodies they'll they'll stop drinking also and stuff like that so i was like all right what would uh what would my progress look like if i just stopped just drinking and originally it was supposed to be for like a couple weeks get back at it then a couple weeks turned into all right let's see if we could do the three months and then after the three months came some of my biggest partiers are like are we gonna do it again or what i was like, all right let's do i'll come back in six months six months was february and now we're just now in April, so now we're about eight months. See? Listen, Joey, congratulations. And and listen, everybody, out of respect for Joey's journey, this drink and all future drinks will be non-alcoholic, as well as keto-friendly. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not serious. I'm not serious. But, um, but no, seriously, if you are someone you know is struggling with addiction, don't go through it alone. There are tons of resources here to help you. You can call 800-662-4357 or text your zip code to 435-748. Now, how convenient is that? I mean, you know, you can text your zip code to get resources. Um, you may also visit SAMHSA.gov. That's S-A-M-H-S-A.gov. Um, and I'm just, there, there are times like this where I'm just like even more grateful that I have this platform because in our community, we'd be withholding praise and knowledge and resources. So thank you. You know, just I'm just grateful to both for your contributions. So, so Joey Kai, we got our first Ask the Guys now. So, okay. for, for, so listen, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, last time on our men's discussion panel, we started a new segment called Ask the Guys. And uh, this question comes from Anonymous. Anonymous is 27, and he asked the guys, how do I tell my girl about my student loan debt? I mean, I think this comes back down to any conversation. If you're serious enough, finances have to come into play, right? Am I paying for this, date night, all that? But I think when you're trying to grow, we got to uncover some of those weeds. And I think student loan debt is understood, right? There's people who are saddled with it for the rest of their life. It's something that, unless it's truly something that can impact you, right? Where, hey, I can't contribute to us because it's going, most of my money is going to these loan payments. You know, that's one thing, but honestly, it's something that needs to be done because now I rather know how do we attack this together because if you're my partner, how are you supporting me in my financial journey too? Is it advising? Is it, you know, your tips and tricks? Maybe they got out of it. They can help you. But you may be not truly alone in that. But at the same time, I rather know now versus at some point when we truly become a we and we're actually legally we, that's now my debt too. And so I need to know up front what I'm inheriting. And that's those honest conversations. And I can't be mad about what you did to get education. Like, because then we all know the whole way it's this, it's how most people have to do it, right? It's not unheard of. People have that. And the only thing you can really hope for is Biden cancels it before you actually have to tell them. But we don't have the Supreme Court saying now already, so it's not happening. But honestly, I think it's one of the things that's understood because. I can't fault you for doing better for yourself and ed like educationally that costs money. Because if it was free, we have more people with us in a better position without the student debt. But it has to be told. Finances have to be discussed if you're going to go to a step deeper in a relationship because I don't want to watch your pockets. I don't know wonder where it's coming from or where it's going because I see you every time we hang out. What's happening? Where's your money going to? If you're saying, oh, I'm taking care of family, one thing, but like, yo, <laughs> the government got me. So honestly, just talk it out. And I think if this is the break in your relationship, y'all not ready for a lot of other deeper conversations. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Joey, you've been with the beautiful Brittany for five, going on six years now. Help our good brother mom out. So it's that question is a very loaded question because there's more to it than just let me tell my girl about my student loan debt. So first is, 
are you hiding it? Is it current? Is it, there's way more than is like, do I tell my girl about it? If you're, if your student loan debt is current, you wouldn't really, it wouldn't be a problem. I don't even think you might need to tell her because it's one of your responsibilities. It's like my phone bill. I wouldn't, I don't need to tell my girlfriend ev like every time I pay my phone bill. But now if my phone is off or something like that, oh, okay. Yeah, now my phone bill might come into play. Like, why is your phone off? Oh, well, I'm having trouble maybe paying my phone bill. Maybe the I don't need to be at this service. Because like with finances, it gets very tricky because like my student loan situation is that I've, I've taken out a, a, a ton of student loans. And now I'm feeling the residual effects of high interest rates and different things like that. Maybe it was something manageable before. And maybe it might not be manageable now as things are changing. Maybe he might just need a simple refinance that his girl might be able to give him some advice on. I get advice from other people, my girl included. Like, I don't think you should be paying this or this interest rate is too high or anything like that. So let's figure out a better solution for these uh, type of situations. So should I tell my girl about your student loan debt? Of course you should. But what capacity is that student loan debt? And then also, where are you guys at in your relationship? If you guys are two weeks, like, you, like I was saying, if you're two weeks into it, that's a little bit uh that's a little bit forward thinking right there. Like you don't need to tell them everything. Like, yeah, if you guys are in a serious committed relationship, you guys are trying to merge everything, get joint bank accounts, getting like living together, you guys have to split the rent and the bills and the this and the that, then student loan finances will come into play. Like, all right, well, I know that three hundred or five hundred or this amount goes out for that. So that means that we have this available disposable income or whatever to 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 make it work so long story short i would say that you guys do have to talk about it but also it I, for me to really answer that question or give you a more direct answer it would need to i would need to get some more general knowledge of what's going on with anonymous so anonymous i'm gonna give it to you straight about you tell her exactly what's going on straight talk makes for straight understanding sit her down tell her about how much you know debt you have and what your game plan is and see, this is why we all got to vote. <laughs> but you shouldn't have an issue telling her because, you know, if you're writing it to ask the guys, then you two are definitely in a serious relationship. Like, you care a lot about her to ask us for advice. I mean, you know, it depends on how much you have because 20000 and 200000 hit differently, especially when you're trying to, you know, buy a home, you know, do things like that. But also you may qualify for relief or even forgiveness. And you can find that out if you go to studentaid.gov uh, and you'll get more information on that. So thanks for writing in. Um, so this next one is also from Anonymous. This is a, a girl. Um, she's 25 and she's from the Bronx. Shout out to the ex. Mm. Anonymous asked the guys, how can I convince my man to up his self-care regiment movie? Now, listen, just <laughs> okay. a second, Anonymous. Hold up, hold up. I have to correct you on this because a lot of people do this. They, they it's regiment, not regiment. Like regiment is 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 the troops, you know, in the army. Shout out to our troops. And regiment is like, you know, brushing your teeth, combing your hair. Anyway. Anonymous says she likes getting massages and facials, as well as pedicures, and she wants him to come with her. He's game, but the issue is all of the massures are male, and she says he feels uncomfortable having some big muscular guy rub him down while he's half naked. Okay, okay, Kai, go. No, I mean, I, I, I think literally I try being the softest man, literally and figuratively, any way I can, right? Because no one wants to just be on someone hard, right? It's one thing to tell you about something your inner, how you want to be manifest hourly. And I think it's one of the things of, you know, being especially black, you're tall, just basically, just don't be ashy, right? And whatever that means, so it's lotion. But realize people with lotion may not be the best for you. Clog your pores, you're not doing the right thing. And you should be a body oil person. There's different things. So there's levels to it, right? And I think she wants to go to the full gamut because a massage is a treat, but I don't know if it's truly a part of a regimen to do all the time. It's a, hey, let's get a couple massages, kind of cute, whatever. But I think she needs to start based like, what is it exactly? Is it his feet? Let's start there. Is it actually, he needs to start wearing cologne, maybe feel more confident. Or, hey, babe, you know, when you get out the shower, if you don't want your skin drying out, Try this. This is what I use. Or try my product and see how you feel about it and how it works for you. That's why I got some of the best hair conditioner out there because I was staying with a homegirl, went to use, I had forgot my stuff, used her stuff in the shower. I'm like, yo, the curls are popping today. All right, bet. Let me start using this. 
all right, all right, I got some things that I never heard before, be on it. But I think there's baby steps because for a lot of that, it's deep rooted in sometimes in how men feel or see their masculinity. Because you even see now recently with um, men painting their fingernails for the fun of it, right? There was a Duke basketball player who just got a million dollar contract with Sally Hansen and talk about that. And the comments were just like, what's happened to the masculine men? Can't be doing this. He's like, I do so I don't bite my nails. Yeah, I didn't know it doesn't harm you, it harm me. But there's steps to it, right? Also, the comfortability about it of this is maybe someone who isn't used to touch because if you regularly embrace, you know, a male friend deeply or, you know, play sports, people just slap, whatever, you're used to it. I think it's really more so first bringing them up to levels and then mentally talking through why is this uncomfortable because clearly there are people who get massaged by men and don't have any and go back to the day. So there's some things to unpack, but I think honestly, start with what is your most number one annoyance and work your way up. I think it was almost jumping in a deep end without any context, right? And then worst case, be something you can call, be like, hey, the place we go to, do you have a female masseuse or not? When did she join? We can go Tuesday. How do you bend your own way to make him feel more accepted in what's going on? And so I think for Anonymous, it's steps. I understand what you want to tackle first, because in a way, you don't want to be making over your person unless that's what you're trying to do. Then I think it's identifying exactly what are things that you would like to see. Go on a journey together, right? Hey, babe, I'm going to go shopping. We'll come in and pick some product. Hey, how does this feel in your hair? Like, or things like that. There's ways to walk someone through this because it's been the confidence I get for just doing my own routine, but also it's refreshing to know I take care of myself and I don't ever have to worry about someone saying, I smell, I don't feel some type of way or whatever. Those are the worst thing I ever have because now you might relive some of those childhood memories of being talked about in a sense. And we've all had people where, you know, this way people are like, oh, my natural must. I'm like, nah, that's actually must. Like, <laughs> they ain't natural about it. Just like, if you want to use, you know, aluminum for deodorant, yes, but you still need an answer precedent on that. So I think it's understanding of where it needs to be handled. It's a journey together because I only know so much, but I've had my women, homegirls, colleagues help me through the journey too. Be like, hey, Try this if you don't want to. You know, so I think it's honestly, there's nothing wrong, but it's almost, what are his hangups besides the massage? But maybe the massage was too much too soon. So as far as like the initial question of just like up, up, upgrading his uh, cleanliness, basically, we that comes on so many different levels. Some guys are brought up like guys are rough and tough and we smell, we smell like we, we have BO. Like that's, that's part of being a man. Like, like my granddad, used to do it like this of course like a well-groomed man is like that's something like on top of that but it depends how like there's definitely levels to it is, like is he not taking a shower at all is he taking a shower once a day is he taking it like you know like is he not brushing his teeth every day like those regular like let's say that those regular grounds of cleanliness are are met now he, now she's saying like getting i get my nails done like now that's more pampering so is he just dirty not saying dirty like that but is he just like unclean or uncleanly as far as just a, a natural from a natural standpoint or is he doing that and then you want him to just be more like more pampered like as far as getting your nails done and things like that with with that 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 is a whole different rabbit hole about having a man do your nails or something like that like i have hair that's that's like me saying that i won't let another guy braid my hair but there's locticians that are guys that basically they're doing your hair so also is that the same like maybe because it's nails and because guys aren't like really like nail guys so maybe that might be foreign type of thing like that he might see like getting a massage those might be foreign foreign activities that are like no i'm i'm a guy yeah. maybe if my girl gave me a back massage but it's always just like one of these type of things not a full sit down situation where i'm getting like i have to put the have to put my bathing suit on get in the robe and everything like that and go through the whole process like if we were in jamaica or on vacation so as far as that like like you said you can also find like there are women that do all of these things also it, it will he will that person be able to get his nails done by a woman in that theory it should be yes it should be a simple no-brainer like you, you don't want to go to the nail shop that only has men doing your nails. Okay, so there are plenty of lovely Asian women that would love to do that guy's nail. I, I know that for a fact because, I you know what I mean? I know a lot of Asian women that do that wonderfully. And Black women and all women of all, not just saying it like that, but 
there's plenty of women that do nails or there's plenty of women that massage bodies or there's plenty of women that do all these other type of things that if it's a male to female thing, that's an easy fix. Now making him more comfortable doing these type of things, he might just be like, like my brother is kind of old school. He likes, he's a, a classic man's man from the way they used to raise him back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Like if you get a scrape, throw some dirt on it. That's that type of rough and tough. So if he's type like that, then those those type of activities, like he would probably be better off with a regimen of just being like clean, lotioned up and then cologne. And then the other upkeep will just have to be like just minimal, not like as pampered or as uh, as well groomed, because that might be something that he's not accustomed to. So here's what I'll say, Anonymous. First of all, I got to commend you on encouraging your man you know, to participate in something like this. Because a lot of guys consider self-care something soft or some other word that I'm not going to use out of context on here because this is a safe space. But like I said earlier, straight talk makes for straight understanding. So he's telling you he's uncomfortable with a male masseuse, masseur, I'm sorry, massaging him. And honestly, that could be for a number of reasons. But how about this? How about this? Why don't you two go for the facials and the pedicures and when you're home alone by yourselves, give him a massage yourself. You know, dim the lights, you know, put some slow jams on, you know, a little lay your head on my pillow, even a little slow jams, <laughs> you know, maybe light a candle or two, you know, whip out the oil and you give him a massage. Now, I mean, me personally, I don't rem I don't mind a male masseur as long as he stays above 110th Street, all right? <laughs> I mean, Central, now listen, Central Park is cool. He can go to Jersey City. <laughs> he can go to Brooklyn. <laughs> he, he can go to Fort Lee <laughs> or the Bronx. But anything below 57th Street is just off limits. Like, I'm just saying. But, yo, and this is the funny thing. This is the funny thing. So in the email, because I, I, like, rewrote this because the email was, like, long and crazy. Mm -hmm. And y'all got to stop sending us long, crazy emails. Like, I just <laughs> can't. Yeah, but she it's, it's too much. Like, it's, it's too much. So... But wait, she described how like the guys look, the masseurs look at the place. And she said the one guy looks like a big dick alligator with dreads. I was like, yo, you're fine. <laughs> 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 what, what you checking like, for? Like... I'm, listen, I'm about to shut, look, look, Kai, we about to go to the Mexican spot. I'm shutting the shit down. Like, <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't. But okay, so we got another one. We got another one. So this one is from... Fiona. Fiona is 26. Doesn't I don't see where she's from, but anyway, she um she asked the guy, she says, I have a very serious question for the three of you. Uh oh. Here we go. Fiona, what you about to come at us with? Like, <laughs> wait a okay. Okay, here, here, oh, oh man, here we go. How come every guy I get with watches porn? I don't want to be with a man who watches porn. It's so unhealthy to me. Ooh, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it's loaded, but it's not. But at the same time, I think it's funny of, we all come in age in different ways, right? Men and women, differently depends on where you are. I think I grew up in a time where I wasn't the first one, but people around me were talking about seeing this stuff and showing me these images and things. So now as far as once it gets introduced to your world by someone else, it's something that's just there. Because at the same time, I get to see and interact with somebody. If I'm 60, I'm not doing this with another six-year-old, you know? I'm interacting, seeing these scenes and vivid imagery, but I'm not 16. I'm still trying to figure out how to finish AP Kill. <laughs> versus try and see what Mr. Mark is trying to do tomorrow, you know? <laughs> but it kind of becomes like the lexicon of like, in certain, the culture where porn is this, like it's almost for some, and I kind of want to speak for generality, but it's almost, it's coming of age. It's something that you've been doing for years on end. It's like, how do you bring a cold turkey habit? How do you go from, cause I'm not always with a partner. I, I could be, we're all droughts or just, I'm not seeing anybody, but I doesn't that not mean I'm not I don't have sexual you know tension sexual feelings I need to express myself somehow and some people don't have good imagine imagination by themselves they need something visually in front of them so I look at it sometimes porn is an aid because now necessarily I'm not gonna be you know take you from the top ropes and down to you know the bedroom but actually same time 
I can see all different things. I may not see my own every day. So I look at more so of it's just images that help someone get to the level of satisfaction that they want. Now, if you want him to stop, you have to ask him, why can't he? Because it could be something where, hey, I enjoy what we do, but if I see you once a week, what am I supposed to do the other five days if I don't see you in that sense? And so it's more so I think a question of, and, and I think because I, you know, I don't hear the opposite of, yes, there are women that watch porn, but it's something that's not sometimes taboo. It's almost more taboo if women say they watch porn than the men say they do. And men, it's like, oh my God, yeah, you got your favorite work out of her. And a woman, you'd be like, how do you know this artist, right? <laughs> how do you hear about so so? What you been doing? And so I think it's, it's culture, the taboo of men, it's okay, and women's like that. And she grew up that because why, but at the same time, would you rather him just watch porn to be out here in the streets doing something with someone else potentially? And so honestly, it's I think it's asking why is this man doing it at this age, but at the same time, it's something that's ingrained in our society. I mean, look at the pr- proliferation of OnlyFans. People that need his um, income, it's technically pornographic images. I'm seeing a video that helps to somebody now, someone's getting money, transaction, and it's something with that. But honestly, I see no harm, no foul. Unless it's something where I'm now trying to inspect what we see on film with you. <laughs> and that's not the case. And so that's sometimes where I think the delineation where you have a lot of, I think, younger generations that that's all they're doing. So they actually are expecting that in that real life situation versus those that use that as an aid. So I think it is an aid or is it my main source and you're here. So the delineation, the distinction between that, but at the same time, that man's still your man. He's still, y'all still do whatever. So the thing is, if this is the break, Let's really question about why if this is such a main issue. Just because you don't do it. You have partners, people have my partner smokes and I don't. You know, what is, what's going on with that? <laughs> so I think it's honestly, but if it's it's healthy, unless there's concerning types of things he's watching, that's what we kind of got to watch out. Because we all know there's always a dark one. <laughs> Guys, we're not going to go there with you, Dave. Like, we're, not, we're not going down the dark web web for Like, this is... PG-13. Yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep PG-13. No, I mean, not 13. We'll keep it. Yeah, we're yeah, going to do that, too. For sure, we're going to do that, too. Because it's 2024. <laughs> I'm turning over a new you want, you want the link? Go ahead, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Joey. <laughs> um, yeah, that is... These are some very, very insightful questions. Because with, with porn, it is, it is a... It's like... It's something that is like you can say it's not healthy just because like you'll start to get an unrealistic perception of women and not all women are like of course porn is gonna give you the best of the best. Like all the guys have big dings, all the women sometimes. are beautiful. Yeah, sometimes you'll get the yeah, best. Like of for best. the most part, like of course there's every fetish and every type of rabbit hole, but also it is for a guy, it is almost like you were saying a badge of honor. That is something that you do like like guys, like a guy thing to do is to go to the strip club. Like, would you not want your guy to go to the strip club? Like, no, because he's throwing money at women and that's degrading to them. Like, OK, but in society, you're you're seen as a masculine guy. If you go to the strip club, you seen as a masculine guy or more masculine. Like, that's like a sign of masculinity, kind of like it's kind of a taboo one. Like, you don't admit to it. But like, if you're like, oh, like, you know, like no guys gonna be like, oh, I, I watch porn. But if it's something that like I'm talking to a girl about, like, yeah, like, you know, I. I dabble and dabble with a little bit and you tell whatever your preference is, but it's not something, it's not something that you broadcast. It's not something you wear on your, on your shoulder. Like, yeah, I, I watch mad porn. Like, no, but why is she like, it's also like, is it a problem? Is he watching too much porn? Is he not giving her enough love? And he, you know what I mean? That could be the problem. He's looking at too much porn and he's not giving her that same type of attention. Maybe he's thinking that she's not as pretty as the girls that he sees on a daily basis, which is a lot of like, men can be very visceral i why don't why is your body a little bit like like the last time the guy's like your, your coochie ugly what coochies are you looking at you looking at oh yeah every porn star coochie might be like that just because of the nature of the business that they're getting themselves into so when you start having those type of unrealistic like personas of what women or what regular people are supposed to be like not everybody has a six-pack not everybody has muscles not everybody has these things that you're seeing so I don't I don't think it is like I'm a guy that like in all honesty, like have I watched porn of course? Am I active participant in doing that type of activity? Sometimes, let's say, right? But at the end of the day, like can I turn it off? Yes. 
And if my girl is telling me like she probably doesn't want me doing it as often or things like that, I should be okay with that. But also I do have needs and I hope that if I like it's like advice, it's like smoking or any or drinking or anything else. If I got to put this down, I'm going to probably need something to supplement my time when I normally used to do that at night. Maybe I just need a, a cold tea or something like that to help me get through. Well, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is to help me get through, because like anything you can stop anything that you want to do. And now if it's more than that, like, no, he has a porn addiction, like he's a uh, he's fondling himself during work hours where he needs to be working. Now it's cutting into his money. Like now that's when that's like when porn becomes an addiction, like porn addiction, like they're talking about. Like it's outside of just fun and games like he's just doing it when he's alone on a Saturday night. No, he's doing that at 430 on a Wednesday when he has a meeting in 10 minutes. Like, OK, now we're getting past that. Yeah, we're getting past where it's acceptable. But from a from a regular standpoint, you probably should limit it just so that you don't start to create. It's also like social media. Like, would you would you tell somebody that they're weird for for being on social media? No. If somebody is like, I don't use social media, would you be like, that's weird, too? Like, you might think that's more weird in this day and age than 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 watching porn. Like, how are you not on social media type of thing? So everything comes with with uh, the good and the bad and yes porn can be bad because the industry and all of the like the ideology behind that can be bad but also it does serve a purpose and it's to entice and to entice people to to do sexual acts basically and that's how people like back in the day this is my final thought back in the day my parents and my my friend's parents they used to have the vhs tapes that they kept under the bed that they don't bring out every once they only brought it out every once back in a while. Back in the day, I still got the yeah, yeah under the, the VH set, yeah. And then that was, was the, the reason, the rationale that they used to tell the kids back then, or what they told us, is that they didn't know because they 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 got married or they were doing this so young that they didn't know how to do these things. So that was a video on how to do those things, and that might have been true. It might have been a lie. I don't know. I just know that it can be an instrument to show you how to how to do things. You know, that was actually on Sex Before the Internet. It came on Vice. And mm -hmm. uh, Joanna Riley was on that. Um, shout out to her. But that was on Sex Before the Internet. There, there was this, I forgot, I think it was called The Joy of Sex or something. It was like a video collection. I think it's also like nowadays, we also desensitize. I remember trying, you know, people back in the day, you had that back button, right? Cinemax, the cartoons. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't get caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taxi yeah. Cop but like, I remember watching Nelly's tip drill video for the first time. And I'm like, what? But now it's almost like you go on social media now, you see that just scrolling. Like, in a way, we have to desensitize where I can catch a titty on the gram. <laughs> just like watch that on the gram. Now I'm purposeful. So the fact that, you know, the man is doing what he's doing that, because would you rather him, you know, and it's or anybody like obsessing over a person they see on their social media or just having this free form entertainment because it is an art at times too but also we just been desensitized where it's kind of like you should be happy i'm doing this versus you find i'm liking this one model's ten thousand posts every single day hoping to catch something so i'd rather you know hey it's a control form versus actually have access to dm like hey <laughs> what's good <laughs> It's everywhere, though. Like you, like you said, it's 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 everywhere. It's like, it, and and that's the thing with Instagram. Like I don't even go on there if I can help myself. Um, but it's like just as soon as you go on, it's almost as if Instagram is listening to like whatever's going on in, in your house or your neighborhood. Anyway, Fiona, 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 the cinnamon apple of my eye. You need to grow up. Period. Men watch porn. But now what I will say is, like Joey mentioned, if his porn consumption is excessive, then that may be, a, that's a red flag. He may not be the guy for you. However, your tone, Fiona, is, is just like, it's very immature. And I'm just going to say this. You really don't seem like experienced with men or even like really interested in men. And listen, that's, that's fine if you're not interested in men. Live in your truth. Walk in the light in the right way. But something bothered me too about your letter and as the, and Kai, um, she purposely misspelled porn. She spelled it P-R-O-N. And I'm like, are you one of those people who write sex uh -huh. with the X first and the S last? Like, I, it's just weird, it's weird. And listen, sex is nothing to be ashamed of. 
but it's like you've made it something dirty and disgusting. So, so I hope that you find someone who can help you work through whatever this issue is that you're going through. Because men liking pornography doesn't seem like it's the issue. I think I was fortunate where I, we had sex education. So even I was watching whatever secretly, but I still had someone tell me this and that. In a lot of schools, wherever they're from, they're missing that part, right? So you are finding things out the wrong way. So what if you were always taught that this is an act versus this is something of pleasure? So you got to act a certain way. Could be my boyfriend, my boyfriend should act this way. He should do this, blah, blah, versus of us actually seeing it as pleasurable. It's almost like you got to eat three meals a day, got to have sex with my boyfriend once a week. Like it's almost become a task versus the fact of enjoying it. Like the fact that you have to write it a certain way. It's like, what? Some people will look at it as like, almost like smoking. That is like, it's an act that degrade your mind you know what i mean like i would prefer a guy that doesn't smoke because i don't want him polluting his body maybe she's looking at porn as polluting his mind i'd rather not have somebody who is polluting his mind all the time with all this porn when he has a beautiful girl right in front of him and he's still spanking his monkey all crazy so i i can see like I, that's why i'm gonna disagree a little bit with you chris i'm gonna give you a little pushback right there maybe it's not because he's 26 i want this i, I know this. that's that's the point give that's me the smoke I'm yeah yeah i'm, I'm in give the smoke. that's what i'm saying like maybe it's not like that because I, I i've had girls tell me like yeah you probably don't need to be watching as much porn as you do and things like that like first of all you can't tell me what i need to be doing because you know what i mean you don't you, i should be wanting to not do that because you're showing me, you're supposed to show me the error of my ways, and then I'd be like, you know what, you're right. And then you just force me, like, no, either you're gonna stop watching porn or you don't wanna be with me. I might have to, I might not wanna be with you because there's other people that don't have those requirements of me. And I might be able to go, go, you know what I mean? I might be able to do that and still have a healthy relationship. So I look at it as more as maybe like, I don't want him to, to con maybe it might be the amount, or maybe it might be the type, or maybe I just don't want him doing it at all. It can be kind of controlling as long as it's not in a very like malicious nature. It might be that like like I said, it's smoking. I don't want him to pollute his mind with too much porn. But if it's something like that, then you should be easy. That should be the easiest conversation. Hey, I think this is more of a like more of a hindrance to your mental than uh something that is going to help and uplift you. So I would prefer that you don't do this. If you do do that, then it shows me that where your level of care about certain things are. And if she's very serious about it, you should show how serious you are. And that means a lot to you. So his level of care should be a little bit more off the strength of that. Yo, all those charge, man. Like, and I see it, she, she's from uh, South Carolina, by the way, but she wrote the whole letter in caps. Nice. And I'm like, she's like talking at us. <laughs> and I told you guys about doing that. Please don't, don't talk at us. But. I'm like, yo, Fiona might need to go to, uh, join Anonymous instead of Anonymous Boyfriend, you know, at the massage place. I mean, she, you know, she might need to go get rubbed down by the dreadlock dude with the Pringles can, I'm just hey, saying. Yo. Anyway, oh anyway, in all seriousness, in all, in all seriousness, wait, I, I, I get it. Listen, I gotta pull it together. This this next letter um, comes from Keisha, and I and Keisha's 26, she's from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, she's your neighbor cop. She ride around with um, that Nina? No, it's not joking. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so Keisha, Keisha, y'all are crazy. Keisha asked the guys, I'm considering getting some cosmetic surgery because I'm very insecure about my nose. I heard your advice last season about the BBL and I thought it was excellent, but my nose got me teased by my brothers and they still do it when we get together at holidays and family gatherings. That's fine. I just think it will improve my aesthetic and open me up to more opportunities. I think I want a nose job. Please don't drag me, guys. She writes, please don't drag me. <laughs> Joey, I'm going to let you answer this first because you're looking. But, but just a second, before you answer, Kai, I need you a little bit longer, Kai. Can you tell whoever that is? To, to, did you do on the Chris David show? Listen, I'll I give them tickets or something. All right, cool. So this is a tough dilemma. It's a dilemma. So one, people, especially your face, your face is your moneymaker, right? If you have if you have any slight type of like di different pigmentation or different type of things, especially on something that's highly visible like your face, it can definitely make you feel not only subconscious, but also it can actually, the world is a very cruel place. And it's, I hate to say it like that, because like, I want to think that the world is rainbows and butterflies, but a lot of people will look at your face and if it's not aesthetically pleasing to them, yo, you're ugly. I'm sorry. You're ugly. You might have the, she, that girl might have the most beautiful heart in the world, 
But if everybody thinks she has a big nose, then they're gonna be like, yeah, she's the she's a really nice girl with the big nose, like, and that's so terrible. But that's that's the reality. So I don't really believe in the BBLs and things like that because I feel like your body, like your face, is something that like yes, like if you have a cute face, you can have whatever type of body that you want. So that one, I'm like, if I'm teetering, I'll I'll that that'll be one that I'll let you. I'll let you have that one. If you want to get a nose job, I think that, and that's also less invasive than if you were to get a full BBL and things like that. They just kind of chip your nose a little bit and they just give you a little bit. Like, facial, like, full-blown plastic surgery, you're doing Botox and then now you're looking like Kim Kardashian type of thing. Now I think that's a little excessive. L like, a regular, like, a little bit of rain rhinoplasty or whatever you call that, I'll, I'll say that is, is, is acceptable. A little bit of a nose job, yes. You're getting a full blown face reconstruction. I would say no, because I don't think it was ever that deep. And also, you're you're changing your uniqueness. That some of those things, like not anybody wants a big nose. Though. Nobody wants a big nose. Nobody wants anything that is anything that's weird or anything that they'll get made fun of. And also, you got to remember that is it only your brothers making fun of you, or are or is that something that has been like like throughout the years, like not only my brother but my ex boyfriend or whoever. If that's been a sore, like a, a, a thing that's been ongoing, then yeah, that might be something that is an avenue that you could go down. I know my family could be cruel and they might be the cruelest people that she's encountered. You know what I mean? Just because they know her well enough to talk about her nose like that. So it really, I would also like, I'm a judge. Show me the picture. I got to see the car facts. Show me the car facts and I'll let you know if you need one or not. So I, I think of it like that. Show me what you look like and I'll tell you if you need it or not. From my standpoint, I got a good judge of character. I think I'm pretty good at what's ugly and what's cute. So I think that's what we need to do. I say a, a nose job, yes. But if it's full-blown facial reconstruction, no. And a BBL, no either. Because, like I said, I, a lot more complications, a lot more problems than solutions with that. I think what's interesting behind this, like, this girl up in, like, an ethnic family joke. Like, you get clowned up for doing, even especially in our community, you get clowned up for doing the most... Positive mundane, thing. yeah. You get called like they make it fun of you for having an umbrella on a rainy day. Like, yo, look at oh, look at you prepared ass. Look at that ass. <laughs> <laughs> so prepared over here. Uh, like, yeah, right. <laughs> this guy. So I've been growing up with that, but it's like a couple of things. Like one, and we brothers, is your nose similar or not? Like, there's some yeah, right. Like, Her nose might, yeah, for sure. Um, it's the fact of you know a nose job, and actually you're seeing a rise of this because people are really you know the black nose or the ethnic nose they don't want that and it's interesting how my nose like you said i are the holder is my is my nose really holding me back from life or just socially how i feel like every time i get up and i look in the mirror it's like damn i got good teeth and everything but that nose is one thing that's sticking out to me so i think it goes back to like mental health and body dysmorphia how we're really seeing one another how we view each other right you say who's bigger better but the fact of family's family right your family's gonna be harsh on you go home oh you gain a little weight whatever but the fact of how else when she goes through her day is she being judged on her nose or she just internalized this whole thing like my nose is what's making my life terrible and the thing about that where she go get the surgery but one thing we forget like you can't change genetics if she has kids down the line mommy what happened? you don't look like this like why does my nose not look at like your nose now and so now if your daughter has your genetics and genes what are you gonna do when she's 26 hey babe it's time to get your annual like the family nose job so that's the other thing it's almost like Actions for me must impact us down the road because now I might if I'm I don't want my daughter or son to be like, hey, you should feel good about yourself, but you didn't because you didn't. So now it's even opened up that own thing of now we this is a thing I'm setting in motion. But honestly, like you said, I think it's if you're gonna do it, go to a surgery you trust because even though it's you know not as bad as not bad, but like BBLs did the back of someone's base in Miami. You still want to go to a board certified person, right? You still want to make sure, like, you don't want to use your tax income of 5K. You want, if it costs eight grand, pay the eight grand because you want that care concern. Because imagine doing this. And I think somebody don't look at the bad side. We see it a few times. You see on social media, you got a botched job and now you're paying more money to keep going. Yeah, so that's, the, like, that's the scariest part. Don't have somebody like you could have had a, you could have had a, let's say that your face was decent and then they now made it less decent than what it was originally. And that's also, that's also part of the coin or understanding of doing these type of things. Cause like, like everything there's a hierarchy. Getting your boobs done is not as bad as getting a BBL. Getting your nose done is not as bad as doing your boobs. Getting your teeth done is not as bad as getting your, like, you know what I mean? Like all there's like tier levels to these type of things. So 
getting your teeth done is acceptable, but not getting your nose done, like I don't I don't look at it like that. It just is like you said, be safe about it, be responsible about it. And then also like, you know how you feel. Like if it really is something how you feel and it really hurts your like pride and it hurts your spirit, get it. Cause there's nothing that we can tell you. Like you're probably gonna get it whether I told you to get it or not. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if it's one of those type of things, do what's gonna make you live the happiest life that you can. And that nose is really just from your own psychological standpoint, is holding you back, then get the nose job. Be safe about it. And I hope that you're not doing things needlessly. Like I have, I think I have decent teeth. Like eat. they're not the best. I got a chip on one of them, but I'm not gonna knock all of these out for veneers and put myself financially at a disadvantage and whatchamacallit, because these are functioning teeth and they're not that bad. Like, yeah, just get a new, get, get your chips fixed. <laughs> and other and than that, that, that on, on top of that, like your point too, though, I think some people forget like, that. like there's this is there's maintenance to anything, right? Plastic surgery isn't forever. If I get my nose done, and then you get touched up in ten years. If I get you, know, you get Botox. Like a lot of the stuff you see, like people don't tell you behind the scenes, but it's not meant to be forever. It's a fix. So now in 10, 15 years, this is an investment you're making for the rest of your life. Because what if you, something happens, you don't like your nose later, or it gets broken again? Like so much that can happen that doing this right now is it? Can I breathe right? Is it good? Does it function? Do I still get forehead kisses from somebody? <laughs> Keisha, listen, we would never drag you. Like, this is a safe space for all of our guests and our audience. But you know who we will drag? Your brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll drag I'll your brothers. Your them, bro right? Listen, your brothers sound like jackasses. Honestly. Like, ignore them. Don't go throwing off your facial proportions. Unless it's fun and, and games. I mean, if it's fun and game banter, then that should be but, like... But, but Joey, it's not fun and games if she's asking us. Okay. It's bothering you. Mm. It's bothering her. And, and and I don't do this because, I mean, I like people to have like some type of anonymity, even though she gave us her name and everything she said where she's from. Um, Keisha's very, very, very pretty. Like... Yo, man, oh, Keisha looks yeah. like... That's what I'm saying. Let me see the picture. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, girl won't yeah, like yeah, that. My girl won't yeah, like yo. that. I mean, I got a big egg and cheese for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so listen, Keisha looks like Ananda Lewis or like Chili from TLC. You guys know who Ananda Lewis is. She's like, yo, she's like number one stunner. Anyway, let me stop. Chris, focus, focus, focus. But, but listen, those jobs are one of those things where you could be very lucky and have a very good outcome, or you could be very unlucky and end up on botched, especially as a black person, because your nose is in the center of your face. It is the first thing people see when they look at you. And just in my opinion, Keisha, do not mess with your nose. And um, Keisha's question was originally for our sex coach, but I hit her up. And I asked Keisha, I said, you know, is this okay if we answer it? Because, you know, we're, you know, advice also. And she said, cool, you know, so Keisha, thank you for, for letting us do this. And um, we, I hope we helped. I hope we helped you. Folks have been asking about Casey. Casey was the girl, if you watched the Sex Coach episode, she had the BBL. Um, she, well, she wanted to get, wanted to know, she wanted advice on getting a BBL. Um, I'll have an update for her on that next uh, episode. But um, this, okay, so we got another one. This one comes from um, a guy. Um, his name is Jay. Jay with an E. Um, Jay with an E is 24, he's from Georgia. And Jay asked the guys, um, I'm 24 and I've been skinny all my life. I got picked on about it and now that I'm grown, I'm still insecure about my weight. I want to gain weight because I'm tired of being skinny. It's one of those things that like, bombardment of issues, or sorry, bombardment of images you're seeing that like my natural being, who I am is somehow wrong. And it's, it's not necessarily, it's somehow it's wrong for society, so it's wrong for me versus being individual. And it's funny because being the opposite, like I've always been a bigger guy my entire life and I had to deal with that aspect of it, but it really does come from the fact of. Hi, right, like, before you, before you finish, yeah. I just, I have a, I have a quick thing that I found out about you. What's this I hear that you used to have a tail in the back? Everybody What's this I hear? I remember I remember. You had one too, Joe? That was a 90s thing. I had one too. Everybody had one. Yeah. I, yeah with a high top some. fade. High top fade with a rat tail on the back. Everybody yeah. had high top fade. I didn't have a tail. I had, I had the fade. I cut mine off the day before high school. Uh, I had mine from like 
pre-K to all the way. Mom used to make add a little weave to make it a little lace. A That's little what lace. I heard. Oh, wow. nah, we, this yeah, is what I, I heard. My Kai, let my last Kai, I gotta see a photo. You gotta send me a picture. I, gotta, I, got, I think my mom has it somewhere. Even like mm-hmm. that haircut piece, it's somewhere. Listen, like, I gotta see this. It's why I forget this about is, that. <laughs> This is peak 80s babies right now. Like, this is peak Yo, 80s babies. Yeah, we all had one, though. That was the thing, though. That was it 95, was 96. 95, 96, 99. <laughs> Get a 9, I, 9, I, had a day before high school. I'm like, oh, I got to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I had to get my nut the barber cut. He he gave me the skin fade, and then he got a little too close to it and cut it off. Like, oh man, no! <laughs> yeah, you might as well take the whole thing with it. Now he <laughs> did like coming to America. Yeah, yeah, he oh. did. <laughs> yeah, he said that'll be twenty dollars. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious! Wow, Bring it okay, but Kai, go ahead, go ahead, go. Ahead. I, was, I, I had to, I had to, I had to. Yeah, got, got in the house. No. Nah, I... <laughs> 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 But I, like I saw the, the images of like Vivis Morphia being skinny. It's one of those things of if you, I think some of people forget like genetics are genetics. Like if you can't like you can try, but if it's not working, high metabolism. But you know, also wait till you get that late twenties. That's gonna change like the <laughs> weather. That's why I would say women who hit that late twenty Rihanna weight gain, fantastic. Carry a little more in the hips and but men too. You change your body up. It happens. I say, you know, enjoy the ride while now you can now, you know, enjoy it. But I think, honestly, it's like any, any of this, right? What, what what are you looking to gain, right? A better sense of self-confidence? Cool. But if it's like what beyond that, I want to feel better myself. I can start going on walks. I can take breaks. I can do other things to help with myself feel better. But the actual body, if it's hindering the way I operate, breathe, medical issues, you know, Leave it alone, but again, if this is something that's going to make you feel better every day you wake up, do what you can to do that. But honestly, if you're skinny, you're skinny. You are your size, you are your size. But who you are today is not going to be in a couple of years. Because you always look at photos of your grandparents, your dads, and people. You're like, yo, you know, I remember looking at my mom. My mom used to be like, my mom was like uh, prom queen, looking good. Three kids later, she still looks good, but she ain't the same as she was. <laughs> nah, they're not the same. <laughs> and so enjoy what you can, but at the same time, like, there's way to fix it, right? There's gym routines, like, you know, natural ways. Start bulking if you want to. Work with people, you know, bulk a winter, slim down in the spring. Figure out what works for your body. But honestly, every crew needs a one skinny guy. Every crew needs a one skinny guy. <laughs> and so. Listen, we got a house right here. Okay, we got we got our skinny guy right here. Listen, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I, I was trying. I'm looking through my phone. I was because I used to be. I was skinny at one point in life, and I was like, looking like, damn, like, yeah, in my early twenties. Yeah, that's uh. My I friend used skinny. to say that that's when God has your body because you can do anything to it, and it it'll bounce right back. Look how bony this dude is. Okay, Carlo. <laughs> was a stick <laughs> it's 150 pounds yeah at my height wow Beetle. so so when i went to jamaica this guy said it the best and like this has been like screaming out of the back of my mind like i didn't understand it at the time and i thought he was being a jerk because like i know that because i was going through my fitness journey and things like that this is back like four or five years ago when i right went about right before i turned 30 so i went to jamaica for my 30th birthday and I seen this guy, he was ripped, he was jacked. And I was like, oh, I was like, dang, bro. I was like, I'm like, yo, like, you know, like, how do I, how do I get jacked and ripped like you? Like, what do I need to eat? Or like, what, what type of recommendations would you give me? And this guy, as he walked away from me, he just said, go eat them weights. So my advice to the brother is go eat some weights, AKA hit that gym. And then hitting the gym is going to increase your metabolism. If you want to bulk up, you have to eat. If you're somebody like me who doesn't like to eat, then you're going to be, that's going to be your hardest struggle because you got to make sure that your intake is matching the work that you're doing to create muscle. Cause I'm assuming that you don't want to be skinny, but you don't want to be fat because being fat is not what you're looking for either. You want to be muscular, to get muscles. You have to build muscles to build muscles. You need high protein intake. I don't know all the signs, but you need a certain intake of food that is going to allow your muscles to grow to then because the same way that fat people get jacked is the same way a skinny person will get jacked also. So if you're too skinny and you feel that way, one, you definitely need to see what you're eating, what is your diet look like, and then go and get, go eat some weights. And at first I thought he was a jerk, but that was actually, I hope that brother's doing good. I hope he's doing good because 
That was some of the best advice I ever got. Go in the gym and hit those weights as hard as you can. I mean, you know, he might have been a, a jerk, but you know, you thought that you were going to get like him eating jerk. Yes, he was going to tell me. I thought he was going to give me the holy grail of like, yeah, you need to eat strawberries <laughs> in the morning and uh, kale at night. No, he said, go get some weights. Go do that. Yeah. Go hit the gym. No, I mean, gym. that's that's probably, you, you know, like, I mean, and the Jamaicans, you know, shout out to all the, all the Jamaicans, you know, they're very blunt like that. Listen to your uncles. Like, don't do anything to your body that you'll live to regret. You know, I know it's difficult. You know, when you see all of these big buff dudes on social media, and they be lying about how they got their bodies. But listen, that's a, another show for another day. Yeah, no gear. Stay off the gear. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they be lying hard. But listen, you need to appreciate what you have. Like, how's your personality, Jay? Do you got the rings? I saw your IG. And you know, Jay, I saw your IG. You DM this to uh, this question to us. And you're a very talented artist. But I mean... When you invest in yourself, no one can underestimate that, all right? Like, your value lies within. Don't place your value in what someone else has because that isn't your path. I mean, look look at the three of us. Look at, look at the three of us. We're all built differently, but we're all decent brothers. Even if one of us was built like the other, we're still worthy, you know, of respect and love and grace and kindness. I've been so cooks. <laughs> But, but Jay, good luck to you. If anybody out there, you know, you might be dealing with, you know, some type of body issues. I mentioned this earlier, but you can text your zip code to uh, 435-748. Um, and they have people on standby with resources, you know, waiting to help you. And, and you know, I got a resource too. Stay off of social media. That's it. That's my resource. Mm -hmm. And it makes me sad. You know what I'm saying? It just, that makes me sad. Because he's young. He's 24. He's younger than, than all of us. That's real. Um, <laughs> We got another one. We got another one. And this one is this one is a lighter one. And, and y'all are going to like this one. So this one's from a guy named Wayne. Wayne is 37. He's from Jersey. And Wayne asked the guys. Oh, boy. Let's go. Yeah. I've been getting these messages from this lady on LinkedIn Ooh. telling me she wants to hook up with me. Nice. That's not the place you do that, but okay. Especially not on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's the wrong job you're looking for, brother. At first, <laughs> I thought she was a catfish, but I went to her page and she's real. She works for my company, but at another location in the city close by. She's attractive and I'm interested. She said she saw me in one of our Zoom meetings and wanted to get to know me. Should I link up with the lady from LinkedIn? Joey, you take this because Joey... You ready to you ready to go in? She's so shy, brother. She's so shy, brother. She's so shy. I would say she's so shy because obviously she is not. If if it's confirmed, not a catfish situation. She says that you've seen you guys do work together, so that is true. And she's seen you, so it's not like it's a random like event type of thing. And assuming that this is not any foul play type of thing, like she's trying to set you up, obviously. Shoot your shot, brother. Go for that. I would go for it. Why not? <laughs> not too often do you have a woman that shows interest and is willing mm -hmm. to go outside of their comfort zone to do something like that. That's a very bold move. Right. Maybe you might like a bold move like that. Maybe right now you're sounding like you you're intrigued enough to want to see if this can be something. So you only live once. Go for it. I'll say shoot your shot. So so Kai, Kai yes. I can't get Rizzer up out of my head from last time. You were like, yeah, you got Rizzer up. Like I had a meeting, so this would happen. This is what happened, y'all. I had a meeting and I showed up like extra early. And I'm like, man, they're not going to let me back because I'm not on the schedule till 10. So I go in and, and the secretary's there and she, she looks over it. Like she looks like she's ready to go. So so Ty start playing in my head. <laughs> it's a this, up. this guy over here, he starts playing on my head. He's like, you got to risk her up. And so that's what I did. You know, she let me, you know, she let me go in early. But, but um, Ty, what do you, what do you think? Uh, what, do you, what do you think of the LinkedIn link up? relationships at work right i think for anything we all love the thrill of oh what's the taboo about this is so great we work at the same time it might say that brings similarities like oh you get what i'm talking from you get this and it's an opportunity but i'm one of those where i have to think about how does what i do now impacts me later on now we can say it's an opportunity but what if it doesn't go right and i think yeah but they're not at the same location so i see what you're saying but she's okay. they're saying that because they're they only seen each other through a Zoom. From what he just told me, they only seen each other through yeah. a Zoom call. And it's not like 
we're in the same work like environment. Right. They have the same. So he job works at a location in Jersey City, and she's in a location in, in Manhattan. I'm assuming because he gotcha. said a city nearby. So gotcha. okay. So it's yeah. so quick, but I always look at it. Say, for example, in two or three years, we change our roles, positions, things change. Maybe you're my boss now, and it'll end well for us. And now you're not supposed to harbor those feelings, but it comes into play later on, or you know, it can impact. That's why I'm saying hypoth- it's all hypothetical, right? But yeah. you never know who someone holds that grudge later on. Because I've been in a position where it's like, yo, we good, but now somehow your career is taking off of where I am, where I'm not, and now I report into you somehow. Because HR don't know what happened, right? We but yeah, but it. it can go the opposite way then also. Because yo, yo, you we might have- be like, we hit it off and nepotism is real. Understand. Like, she, she helped me it, get to my, I'm a CEO I'm now one of those people where I've there. always been advised, I don't shit where I eat. And no matter how much it needs to be, because I always say, we all say, let's be adults about this, but we all know that never happens. No one else had to keep that group because the thing did. What if what it turns into? Are we just are we dating? Or are we just talking? Because now when we go to all the other office party, you hear somebody see something. How are you not gonna get your feeling because we're bringing those outside interactions into the workplace? You know, I'm one of those people where like so my friends, for example, don't hook up with any of my coworkers. We out at a party or something because I don't want to be on Teams get a message like. So what's good with your boy? Nope, not my problem. That's, <laughs> that. That's the worst. So I, yeah. I, 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 that is the worst. Always like. I try to avoid it. It's even the baddest. It's like, because I always like, what like is it? it could go right, but also what could go wrong. But mm-hmm. at the same time, we're adults. You know, <laughs> when I say we're adults, but you want to try it, try it, right? It's just, you be p- prepared for what potential consequences come. You go, it'll run that way, but at the same time, you can, it depends like, how do you interact with women? Are you just out here trying to smash and dash? Because that's going to come off very different with someone at work. Yeah. That's what we need out. But it could be the love of my life. We have the same industry, and next, you know, look at us. We're a love story. So, you know, there's risk. To it's everything. how intriguing is she? If she's if she's that intriguing, I would say go for it. If it's something that comes with more flags, then yeah. If it comes more flags than anything, then I probably wouldn't either. But like I said, if she's beautiful, I think she's attractive. I think this is like a good. This could actually yeah. be something real quick. Even if it doesn't, I, she doesn't have to be my forever person, but. For the stage that I am in my life right now, that this can work, I'd say go for it. Shoot it. It is. In fact, I would say, even for her, she's being bold to reach out. So that's where that I was like, give, you know, so she clearly likes what she likes. And she knows to go for it. So, you know what? Go for it. But at the same time. Yeah, be careful because HR is a real thing. Like, yeah, like he, he's harassing me now. Like, whoa. That was that's... not. <laughs> this, is, this is my thing because I think, you know, as far as attraction, I think they're both attracted to each other. I mean, he sounds like, you know, this kind of, because, you know, Joey, you said it. Um, women usually don't do that. So, like, this is a big deal. I think he's attracted to her physically. I think he's also attracted to the fact that she hollered at him. And I think, you know, um, she's attracted to him um, to even do that. So, Wayne, this is what I think you should do. This, this, this is what I want you to do. Meet up with her at a neutral location. Now, you're in Jersey City. Um, I'm assuming... You work there too. You, you work in Jersey City, so, and she's in Manhattan. How about this? You take the path, right? You go to Journal Square. You take the path. Um, meet up somewhere in Midtown for drinks after work, and and this is what you do: have one drink, just one. Don't get trashed because HR comes into play when you start getting <laughs> trashed, like Joey said. But just get a little something that'll take the edge off, so you can see where her head is. And if her head is right, you know, invite her to an actual date, like not a restaurant or a bar, but like somewhere fun where you can engage in like, you know, some type of activity. Now, I'm not saying you got to go rock climbing or kayaking, you know, but do something that involves, you know, an activity, you know, other than sitting and, you know, just rizzle up, like my comment says, rizzle up. So, um, yo, but the link, the LinkedIn link up is real, though. It's yeah, crazy. that's wild. I've never seen that. I've never the seen that. The LinkedIn link up. I mean, wow. We're all professionals. Um, Settle down, guys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, but but yo, this is what I want to know. This is what I want to see. This is uh, when, when so we we did all the advice stuff. Um, those were those are really good too, by the way. Um, we have more. We'll do them on another show. Um, so thank you everybody who wrote in. What's one of the wildest dates you've ever had, Kyle? So when I was on the apps and cruising you around. Had your cool chain on right did you have a kool-aid chain on no kool-aid chain <laughs> but you know we all got a little, little something something for to catch your eye um, um yeah this one we'll tell 
it was one of those dates where we met through the apps and it was just, you know, all cool, calm, collective. Everything's fine. But then after a while, we decided to meet up. We're having a good time. You know, we go get brunch. And it was one of those Sunday fun days that turned into, holy shit, like, who's the a, who's a, who's an adult here? <laughs> who's going to be the responsible one? Can we go for a boozy brunch? And then it's like, I can have one more. But I'm like, we just had five like crafts of mimosas, but let's keep going because <laughs> it's fun, it's all good. Then, you know, for some of the spots I have in Brooklyn, I like to go to, it's like, oh, I know the bar is a little, you know, hey, so now we're getting free shots, we're getting free drinks. Nice. And it is just going from there, and we keep, you know, bar hopping. And it's about probably now seven or eight. Now, mind you, she lives in Jersey City and doesn't drive. So she has somehow get from back to the path, back over there in some way, shape, or form. And I'm like, I ain't paying no goddamn this. <laughs> I don't know how we're doing <laughs> But we get to my place. I'm like, well, you want to come kick it for a little bit? You know, like, wind down, whatever. We get to my place, and out of nowhere, she just starts attacking me, like, body on body. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'm like, you know, we have our fun. You know, this gentleman never tells. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, I mean, we're going to keep it. Keep it oh, PG. No, 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 yeah, yeah, we're PG, PG today. That is PG. From it's a family here. show this morning. <laughs> yeah. But what it was, but you know, after I hit, after I hit this car, you can you can tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it was a little, it, it, you know we can go for hours, but then it's like okay, it's like eleven twelve. Like how you get home? It's like I'm not leaving. I'm like wait what? Like no, I mean I, I mean, and I'm gonna be like I oh, got work. I got work in the morning. But like, no, I'll just do whatever I need to. Blah blah blah. I'm like no no no. Like I, I need you to leave, but that's why I didn't have a voice <laughs> understanding of how to ask when to leave after this point. So now you ever just be in your like, I'm hostage in my own apartment with this person. I literally just could we talked a few days and now we're out here and the deed's done. I'm good. I got what I wanted from this. And so now it's like I'm wide awake because again, I can't fall asleep because I don't know this person. Are they gonna rob me? Like, and the cat's no help. He's looking at me like, who the fuck this is? <laughs> <laughs> literally, I had to stay awake till like 6 45 and eventually be like, hey, you gonna go? Yeah, I think I'll go home now. So I'm like, okay. right, cool. cool. But like, I'm now like tired as fuck, wide eyed. And I'm like, did she still rob me? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, was there a moment at hour or so? You went into the bathroom. She got you for everything. Oh, oh man. Was, she uh, took all your nice smelling conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> you try to smell all your shampoo. All, all I can say oh. that she was, um, she was a cousin of an infamous podcaster. Nice. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. Shout out to Communipore Avenue. Joey, <laughs> share with us one of your wildest dates. Um, I, I'm pretty, I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't have wild dates. I ain't going to lie to you. Like, my, my thing is mad vanilla. Like, I'm, I'm, we're just going to dinner. Now, I'm a dinner specialist. Call me food bag if you want to. Like, that's what I do. Like, if I'm, we're going to get some good food and then, if I can't wine and dine you enough, then I guess I wasn't doing my job. But usually wine and dine, usually you can't go with, wrong with a wine and dine situation. So Listen, let me tell y'all, Joey wine and dine, Joey and Ricky wine and dine. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the point. You, you got to wine and you know dine. you can't wine and dine them, then yeah, that's half the battle right there. You're always going to find somewhere good to right. eat and then have wonderful hey. conversation. And then after wonderful conversation, then whatever leads into that after that. I've had more crazy times with like my friends and ending up in the wrong place in Brooklyn because I was so drunk that I was in Manhattan and I thought I was on the on the E train to Queens, but I'm on the the M train to Brooklyn and oh. end up in yeah, it was crazy. That's that was a you want a crazy yeah, you story? Know what? We we're not gonna share that one. Yeah, yeah. You told me a crazy story when yeah, I was out that with you. Story I said, was, I yeah, that one was insane. How in the world? Yeah, well, you can you'll share that after the show because that was wild. I was yeah, that's crazy. Oh, so. we were yeah. I was, okay, so I have two. I have two because you all know me um, for everybody. So I have two. So the first one was on Fourth of July. It happened on the Fourth of July, not this Fourth of July, but it was the Fourth of July one year. And um, this young lady I was dating, she said, hey, um, do you want to go see John Legend on the parkway? Everybody knows I went to school in Philly. I went to Temple. Shout out to Temple. Temple. And I said, uh, yeah, but, um, you know, like, 
are you ready? Because she used to take long to get ready. Like easily this girl would take like two hours and 25 minutes to get ready. Like easily, easily. And and I mean, this is in the mid 2000s. So I mean, you know, let's see, this is before lashes and, 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 weave and, and BBLs and everything. So anyway, um, I said, yeah, sure. So I, I go up to her crib and she's not ready. And I'm like, you know, we should have probably been inside the, you know, the gates three hours ago. And she's just like, okay, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, have you ever been to Atlantic City? Knowing she hadn't been to Atlantic City because she was from like the Midwest. She said, you know, no, I've never been. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we're going to go to Atlantic City. So we get in the car and I really liked her. I liked her a lot. Um, I'll tell you more about her after this goes off because I'm trying to keep this clean. Mm -hmm. But she, uh, <laughs> we took the scenic route down Atlantic City. We didn't take Atlantic City Expressway. We went down Route 30. Like we took the scenic route. We talked. It took us like three hours to get there. So I said, yo, I have this card. Um, because whenever you go to the casinos, they give you a card and, you know, you swipe it and put your points on, whatever. And I said, we're going to go to uh, Borgata. So she's like, okay, whatever. I don't know what a casino is. Like, let's just do it. Mm -hmm. So we get there and there's this slot machine there. And Kai, it's called the $100 slot machine. Mm. Meaning you have to put $100 in this slot machine. For one spin. For one spin. For one spin. For one spin. Come on. So Bumble Joey, love. it's like if, 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 exactly. Bumble so it's love. like if you win, if you win, you win. Yes. But if you lose, you lose. just because you lost a hundred That's a hundred I needed for the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, all right, look, I'm going to show you how to play the machine. So something told me, don't let her play this machine. Give her another machine to play. So I put some money in the machine or whatever. And, you know, she played and she didn't win anything. So then I go and I put my hundred dollars in the machine. And I fucking win. That thing lights up like ding, 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 ding. Let's go. Now I'm not going to say how much I won because I don't need you. Well, then again, I can say how much I won. That money's long gone. Yeah, that nah, money's yeah. long gone. No, I mean it, it, it's it's long gone. But um, I'll just tell you guys. So I won like. What? Off of that one fucking uh, spin. All you. that one fucking spin. That is insane. She was pissed because that was the, the machine that she. That was her uh, you, you took her. Well, yeah, you exactly. Took her that was the that. machine that she was going to play. So, so I'm like, yo, <laughs> I just hit. I went to the cage, you know, to get my get my check or whatever. I'm like, yo, I just hit. Like, this is going to be lovely. Like, I'm young. Like, I'm like, oh, we we we, we going to stay here. And she wouldn't speak to me. We get back on the AC Expressway. Mind you, it's 4th of July. It's traffic. We sat in traffic another three hours going back up to Philly. I said, yo, you want something to eat? You know, she wouldn't say anything. So I stopped at Melrose Diner. So I got her food or whatever. You know, I call her the next day. Her roommate picks up the phone. This is back when people still had landlines. <laughs> and her roommate's like, I'm like, yo, you know, what's up? Like, what's, she, what's going on with it? She won't come out of her room. I'm like, well, did she eat? Nah, the food's still on the counter. I said, well, do me a favor. And, you know, heat it up, give it to her or something. Oh, she doesn't want to eat. I'm just like, but I mean, what did you do? I didn't do anything wrong. Like, I, wanted, I was really like smitten. Like, I was in love with, and over this with, with this young lady. Like, I was in love. So, anyway, long story short. So, fast forwarding, my sister, God rest her soul, my sister passed away. But my sister, I was telling my sister about this, what happened. And she said, you know, it wasn't meant for her to put that money in that machine. It was meant for you. Because if she put that money in the machine, she would have stopped talking to you anyway. Uh, I said, you know what, sis? You're right. You're right. And then, so, okay, so another crazy wild, wild thing, we went to, like, some restaurant um, um, in, in the village or something. Like, the food was nasty. He was like, yo, you don't like the food? Like, we could go to this spot on Long Island, I know about, because he was from Long Island. He wasn't from your part of Long Island, Joey. He was from, oh, okay. like, Suffolk. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yo, I know this restaurant. I'm like, but how are we going to get there? Like, I'm not riding L-I-R-R -R like you're smoking <laughs> crack. Like, yeah. how are we going to go? Ron so he's like, line. yo, let's just, <laughs> exactly. You know, see, see, this is why we, we have Joey and Kai on here, because they, they just be <laughs> knowing things. So I'm, I don't have to be here alone, like, <laughs> all in, you know, my own right. head. So... So, yo, so he's like, yo, we could take my dad's car. 
I'm like, so you've been driving this whole time and you've had me up and down on the subway like all day and you didn't say shit to me. So anyway, so we go, so so I'm like, where's your dad's car? Oh, he works for NYPD. You know, he parked over on such and such street. So I'm like, all right, is he going to be okay with this? Like, you know, his dad's NYPD. I'm like, okay. I'm not trying to, you know, get on anybody's bad side. Right. <laughs> exactly. So he's like, nah, it's no problem. So we go over, you know, we go over to, to, to his dad's, uh, you know, we park that. And, you know, I meet his dad or whatever. Dad's cool. We get in the car. The car is like this mid-90s, like, big body beds. You know, the, the old, like, home, you know, That's like, my big favorite body word, by the way. Big body bends. Yes, <laughs> big body bends. <laughs> use that as a so we, use that for people, places, and things. That's yo, you can use it for everything. <laughs> it's amazing. Yo, that, that pizza was a big body bends. Like, yeah. it's, it's just, you it's can use a, it for it anything. Is. So, we get, in the, we get in the car, and we're just like riding around, like joy riding in his, in his pops whip. And so we, I'm like, yo, so what do you want to do? Like, I mean, you know, it's like, well, you know, my dad, my mom and my dad, they're going out of town. Like, you know, my dad's going to, I think Grenada, my mom's going to Trinidad. Like, right. you know, I'm going to be home alone. So we're like blasting music, like whipping in and out of lanes on 495, like just going, just, just, just reckless, reckless. So we get out there and he stops at CVS and I'm like, yo, what are you stopping at CVS for? And he's like, yo, like, um, you know, I want to, I think we should hang out the night. We should go to the club or something, but you know, can you dye my hair? And I'm like, cool, I don't mind dye your hair. Like, okay. We get the dye. We get back to his house or whatever. What do y'all want me to tell you? Because I don't swear. <laughs> I, I just keep on going. You get to the house and then what? I just need to so get to the crib. So we get to the crib. We get to the crib. I'm reading the box for the dye. I'm doing all the steps. I've dyed my hair before. Like, it's no big deal. I've dyed my hair. I've dyed my beard. I've done all of it. So I'm putting, you know, like the stuff in his hair. And I'm like, yo, do you have like anything in your hair? Do you have like a texturizer or something like that? And he's like, nah, like, you know, this is my natural curl. And so I'm like, I right, man, you know, this is your natural curl. I trust you. Nah, he has so something. The guy is going. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock. You start seeing smoke above his head? Start going crazy? Ah, like the, the color starts turning like this weird color, Joe. Like it's like the color was supposed to be red, but it starts turning like this like acid orange or something. Like it just looks oh. crazy. Oh, that's wild. So I'm like, all right, listen, I think we need to wash this out early. I think Ace we need to just do Rocky this. Right, sure. let's, let's, just, let's just do this. So I'm like washing his hair and it's like coming out in like clumps. And I'm oh, like, Oh no, you burned through it. Oh no, I heard no. that. I'm like, son. Not the whole. Not the way. He, the yeah, he knocked what the 2K the off. Yeah, you burned the 2K so, off. So I said, I said to him, I said, man, you know, it's okay if you had a texturize, right? He's like, Nah, I didn't. I didn't. I think it was the dye. It was something wrong with the dye. And he's like, but can you give me a fade? I'm like, so this happened before. Okay, so now this you're This has happened before. <laughs> First you exactly, salon, now I'm a barber. Salon, dude. Now you're I mean, you know, I can't help it. Like, I've always had a fly line on. Okay. 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 Lining, okay. We lining it up, all right? He wasn't upset because, I mean, this is probably something that has happened in the past. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is. But um, anyway, Joey. Our, our jo Joey Joey is our designated TV guy, all right. So, Joey, what have you been watching lately? So, um, so with Netflix, I, I go through my Hulu Netflix. Uh, I seen Freaknik. Freaknik was a good documentary, the one about the Georgia. Um, yeah, the Georgia. Yeah, started started with a picnic and then it turned into something because you know Uncle Luke had to turn into a the, Freaknik. Yeah, it turned into the real <laughs> Freaknik, and then it, it then it got a little predatory. So. Freaknik is a good uh, little documentary, a, little, a nice little quick watch on uh, Hulu. And then uh, people who watch Netflix, uh, the program program is a good one right now. It's about uh, locking kids up because they were bad. But, of course, the parents of these bad kids have money to afford to send these kids to specialized schools where right. if you wanted, you could have gave us the money. If you wanted us to traumatize your kids, we, you would have just <laughs> paid me 80000 to traumatize Hi, did you see I, that? I think, did you did you see the program? I heard about it. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, it's like I, had, I, I being in upstate New York, you have friends that went away for a little bit yeah. and came back, and you're like, what happened? They're like, yo, it's just 
my parents. They were going to parents. But it's like you were doing the behavior, but. What they were doing to these kids, man, that's trauma. Like trauma. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. they rather. I, I rather watched yeah, they, it. I the watched fact it. that they said being locked up was being it, like they were in heaven being locked up. Like in ju juvenile detention was better than yeah. conditions, which that's, is insane. That was crazy. Insane. That was crazy, man. And you know the thing about it is that, that really bothered me is that New York State knew about this since '06, so that's like 18 years at this point. Yeah. that they knew about this. They knew what was going on. And I'm just saying, like, typically we talk about, like, public schools being bad and all these things going on, but you need to vet private schools, too. Yeah. Because who knew that this was going on? And I mean, um, there was a movie I saw on, on Lifetime. It was called Cruel Instruction. And there were girls. It was like a girls' school. And they were forced into, like, this, this treatment facility of being abused. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like, I mean, um, but that county upstate is called uh, St. Lawrence County. They're investigating the abuse allegations at, at uh, the former academy at Ivy Ridge. And uh, Attorney General Tish James' office is now aware of the investigation, and they're looking into this as well. So um, that's that's really good. But uh, Kai, what about you? What you been watching? Well, I am a long time Other than the Tubi movies I told you to watch. Those Tubi movies, I still got to do it. I haven't had a Tubi uh, Ratchet Night in a minute. But outside of, you know, Bad Girls classic. Uh, <laughs> uh, right now, what I've been doing, um, get back into my Law and Order, right? I love me some Olivia Benson. She's my shero. Uh, <laughs> from that cool tip. But actually, you know, I think I forget sometimes I don't use Amazon the way I need to. Outside this order stuff. So Amazon, you know, Prime, the videos there. Outside your typical shows like The Boys, you know, some other stuff. Um, you know, Invincible's back. That's a great show. This season's hit it hard already. It's like, all right, let's get to the like the good, good stuff. Um, also, just like the movies they've put out, because I'm like, where are y'all getting all this? I mean, I know we're getting money on Amazon for these big budget, but like, <laughs> uh, saw the Ricky Siddiqui movie with uh, John Cena. Um, what's his name from uh, High School Musical? Oh, Zach Efron and stuff. That one was actually pretty funny. It actually worked. But actually, I just saw Roadhouse, and it's my movie of 2024. Oh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. We like Jakey. Jake the Yo, Snake. It, is, it has your action. It has your romance. It has your comedy. It has your serious. Like, it's a <laughs> feel-good, like, this is, like, you're, you're tuned in. That's everything you need. And... Is it kind of insane at times? Yes, because it's Roadhouse. But yeah, but that's like John Wick. John Wick gets insane also. Like what's going on? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I that's what I've been on this watching movies. So I get to you know spend a couple hours and then yeah, that's it. And then whatever game I'm watching on TV, you know, with you know NBA season playoffs are coming soon. March Madness tournament. It's as weird as the older I get, I stop watching because I'm like I don't know any of these kids, and yeah. I'll be damned if I let. 19 year old predicate. Nah, those uh, kids are uh, good. Happiness. <laughs> those kids are good. So, so I want to do a quick little shout out. We're talking about March Madness. So, um, my my soon to be father in law, he took us to um, he took us to a Villanova game. So, um, we had nice courtside seats, and it was Villanova versus Creighton from Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Creighton, yeah, I think it's Creighton, Creighton, something like that. So, yeah, they the Jays or something like that. So number 23, number 55 and number 23, them boys are good. Number 23 is like, he looks like a mixed kid or something like that. I just know oh, that. He, he, threw that, he threw that buzzer beater. He, it was, it was they, they, they had him by 20 in the beginning of the game. They kind of put the foot off, the, like let up, let him like come back a little bit. Last like 10 seconds of the game is tied up. Looks like it's about to go to overtime. Everybody's holding each other. We're like, oh, what's going on? Number 23 hits it. Money. <laughs> Ends the game. Ends the game. That's why they're number three. Or they they were ranked number three. Those yeah. boys are good, though. Shout out to number 23. Kai, me and you got beef real quick. We got beef real quick. Now, even though Joey is our designated TV and movie guy, I blame you for my 2B addiction. It's Yo. all your fault. Because There's on our last panel, you mentioned Tubi. And while we were on hiatus, um, um, I, I, I started watching Tubi and I'm addicted. I mean, Joey, the other night Kai had me watching the Bad Girls and Bad Girls 2. Mm -hmm. So like, let me let me set it up for you. Let me set it up for you. It's pretty much set it off, right? But if they had BBLs and they lived in Miami. Okay, I bet. 
So like there's this scene. It's a cheer competition, but it's when... it's no, that, 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 that set it off like like no it's... set it off like oh you, know, you mean like a high movie with chicks with BBL? Yeah. Oh, I yeah, thought that it was bring it, it on, off. not set it off. <laughs> not bring it on. Where did you get bring it on from? I don't know. That's I just heard that. Yeah. Only Joey. You got, listen. Let's let's clap it up for Joey because only Joey. So listen. So listen. Shorty's doing yoga in the park, right? There's this scene. She's doing yoga in the park, like namaste, and her sister's getting set up, and her grandmom's getting murked. And I'm like, how she's so calm right now. This. So then, so then, so then she beats dude to death, like she, she dudes all bloody, and then she gives him a lap dance, and I'm like. The math ain't math. And so, like, they got these, they got these bedazzled shysties on, and 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 everything. Is oh, I, yeah, like this. Oh wow, let's go. He dazzled, and they, yo, but sh- shout out to the rapper Mano because Mano was in that. See, I got about that. You said bad girls club. Bag B A G. Bag girls club and bag girls too. There's two yeah, of them. Yes. Yeah, bag part, girls. Part one and, part and now here's the here's the hack though, man. Here's the hack. Ty taught me the hack. If you watch it on Tubi, you're gonna get all the ads. You don't want to you don't want to get all the ads. Okay. So you gotta watch it on Prime. If you go to uh, Amazon Prime, you can watch it without the ads. Uh, That's the way to do it. Thank you. That's the way to do it. I have but, but see, here's the deal with Tubi. I'm gonna tell y'all real quick. I'm selective with my Tubi films. Like I get bougie with the Tubi. Yeah. I want all the smoke, all right? Like, I need bad lighting, I need bad sound, and there's, there's a picture that's gonna come up on the screen. I need to see this brother right here, all right? This brother right here, mm-hmm. Master Spratling. And I need to see this hood Asian chick right here. See this hood Asian sister? He's in all the movies. Sarah Evo. So if these two aren't in your Tubi movie, guess what? We're not watching. They're A-list Tubi stars. Okay. A-list Tubi stars, Joe. A-list. So as long as I see at least one of them in the movie, I got to see at least one of them. As long as I see at least one, I know it's going to be a memorable A quality and, Tubi movie. Exactly. And also the actresses need to be going by their like stage name or Instagram name, like Sarah the Body. Exactly, <laughs> oh, wow. Kai. Exactly. And, and you know what? I got to see that white horse in the opening. You know that white horse. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. So I, I jumped into the Tubi rabbit. So there's this one, Joe. It's, it's called the affair. Okay. So now both of them, both of them are in this movie. Both of them. And so is the guy Don from uh, Black Ink, from Black Ink Chicago. Mm-hmm. So this is the one where the pastor cheats on his wife and he gets the side piece pregnant. Classic. And she names the baby after him. Oh, classic. Then she goes crazy. She start talking to herself. And 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 then, and then there's please. Then there's another one called please. And shout out to my nurse uh, Nicole down at Penn. Nicole, this is the one I was telling you about. So so Sarah's out there and she's torturing the men who did her wrong. She got them tied up in the basement and everything. And then and then there's uh, toxic traits. Now this one sounds like the chick that Kai was talking about earlier. So it's this crazy. She's it's this Jill Scott looking chick. And she has this this thing called Othello syndrome, where she gets all obsessed with her partner. And so she starts killing people with bleach injections. And she's like, she's just nuts. She's nuts. Then there's, um, what else did I see? A Party to Die For. And this was actually on Lifetime. This was a Lifetime movie. This, okay. Shorty's out here clock chasing, and, and she frames her, her friend for murder. Mm. And then um, First Lady, One, Two, and Three, that was uh, with Hoops from Flavor of Love. And uh, Bridget Jim Nielsen? Jones. Oh. No, Hoops. Hoops. Uh, oh, I can't, Hoops. Oh. I can't remember her name, her real name. Okay. But Hoops, Hoops. she was like the real pretty mixed girl. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah she's I, know, in that. I know Hoops. Yeah, Jim Jones is in that one too, and so was uh, Jennifer Williams, but they're only in it for like a minute. It's like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just here to get a check or whatever. And then uh, there's another one called Lawnmower Man. And that's where the wife is smashing the guard, and he gets so obsessed. With are you going on to be finding the title and then going? You back know to what it is? They suggest him. No, they suggest. Okay. So, like after you watch one, like something else pops yeah. up, and it, it's like a suggestion. Okay. And then you no, know, yo. So this other one right here, man. This one is crazy. This one's wild. It was called uh, "Passionate Betrayals," and it's it's the singer. I remember her from a group back in the day called the Good Girls. And then there's this other this other chick. She's a choreographer. She she got blonde hair. She got really nice abs. 
And right. so they play down low lesbians, Kai. And they're in a plot to kill their husbands. These are their husbands right here. They're in a plot to kill their husbands. It's, it's, it's crazy. And then and, 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 and the ending, it doesn't end how you think it's going to end. Like the ending was just I'm like, surprise. Oh, it like it was like, oh. like, and then there's uh, there's another one. It had like the killer sex dolls. It was called uh, Tiffany the doll. Um, um, a sex yeah. doll that kills you. Nice. So you kill the sex doll figuratively, and she kills you. <laughs> Yo, it, it, that one ended crazy. To Kyle, you gotta watch that. One. Doesn't mean the next date night. Like that's why I watch semi terrible movies. Like it could turn into like one of those three three day go, date nights. They're only an hour twenty. They're not long at all. There's so much plot in such a short time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, it, listen. I just I don't know, man. It's they're addictive. Like <laughs> I, I have taken a break from them um, because like I'm on you know like a different wavelength right now. But like um, and sh and rest in peace to uh, Irish from Seven O Two because she's in that movie that uh, killed the uh, Tiffany. Okay. Ball. But what else? Um, Marriage Pass, Twisted Marriage Therapist, uh, Twisted Day, anything with, with Twisted in it. it, it, it it's it's going to be good yo, she, running that. Yo, she messed Drake up real bad, too. Like, the guy looks like Drake, doesn't he? He looks like Drake. She <laughs> messed Drake, anything. The Drake anything with Twisted in it, like, is, is just, right. you got to watch. And then and then Kyle, uh, uh, Immortal City Records, you got to watch that. It was like Empire on Shrooms. Oh, I like <laughs> Empire. <laughs> Now on shrooms. Yo, go. Joe, it's like it's like Empire on Shrooms. Like mm -hmm. it was nuts. It was trippy. A trippy like, it's crazy. And again, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't end like you would think it would end. But um so the wildest one though, like, and I know all of these sound crazy, but probably the craziest one was this this one called Red Flags. And and Red Flags was crazy because the ending comes out of nowhere. Like all of these, the ending kind of comes out of nowhere, but this one, like right. this movie is a comedy. <laughs> And then the ending is just like totally different than what you would expect from a comedy. Okay. So I should have known. Listen, man, I blame. I gotta blame Kai for this. I gotta blame Kai. This is all Kai's fault because I, I you know, I, I knew Kai would get me addicted to something. Because you remember what I said about his homies last time uh, out in Brooklyn. They were trying to do it. Tell you, man, that, that damn Kai. So it's always, it's always one of these two. It's always one of these two. There's always something. There's always something. If it's not Joey trying to get me drunk at a comedy show, that was epic. It's, it's Kai trying to get me drunk at a, at a, you know, at a something else, at a, at a kickback or whatever. <laughs> and that's but you know epic. what? Speaking of Joey, though, Joey, Joey, you got a doppelganger out there too. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield is your doppelganger. You know who Lakeith is? I, I, he played in Atlanta. Know? Darius from Atlanta. Yeah, Lakeith Stanfield, the actor. Maybe. I got to look at that. I got to see. I got to double check. Well, here's, here's Lakeith right here. So listen, Lakeith Stanfield is in this in this uh, this show on Apple Plus, Apple TV. And it's called The Changeling. And it's based on this uh, 2017 book from with the same name. I won't give too much away, but it's like, it's really dark and suspenseful. It's a really good show. So if you have Apple TV, you guys check it out. Oh, and um, our friend to the show, Mugger, is in the film she's in the, uh, in the show she's in episode three so shout out to mugger hey mugger there's a surgical procedure out it's called carotid pigmentation now it's an outpatient uh procedure that changes the color of a person's iris that's the colored part of your eye now carotid pigmentation is considered to be safer than iris implant surgery which was made popular by uh tiny harris you know ti uh, like tiny from escape several years ago and it's less complicated than um, this other surgery called iris laser uh, laser iris depigmentation, which you know has been used clinically for aesthetic purposes. Why are you receiving going lasers? See, that's official the, that's, approval. That's going back to the body dysmorphia. Why are you throwing so, lasers? So, so listen. So wait. So wait. So wait. Let me fin let me let me finish. Let me finish because I'm right. quoting you first. Let me finish. Let me let me finish. So while carotid pigmentation has been done for over 15 years, it's, it has only been available in the United States since 2019. Locally in the New York City tri-state area, so it starts around eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. Joey, what's it giving? Is giving? <laughs> is giving? 
Not my. It's giving not my. Not my eyes. I'd rather be. And also, I wear glasses. I'd rather be. I don't. I don't even wear contacts because I don't like to touch my eyes. So sticking lasers and doing all types of other stuff like that, I probably wouldn't just because it's close to my brain. It's too close. Oh, oh man. All right. What's it giving? I was gonna say, I was gonna say privilege, privilege, yeah. I was gonna say privilege, like, it's, I was gonna say privilege, like the fact of I'm sitting this such an abnormal large amount to do something benign. I look at it like <laughs> I, I, it's really like, um, and then there's only like five different choices I can do. Let's do something crazy, go red, right. but we'll actually stay red the entire time, or something else will happen. But it, it's privilege the fact that I can spend this amount of money on something that. May permanently damage me, but like it's the fun of it. Like, woo! <laughs> I'm all for cosmetic enhancements, but for me, like this just seems excessive. Like, and I mean, if you look at some of these colors, some of them are actually nice and believable, and I mean, even up close. But then the, the other ones are just like straight up demonic. And so for me, it's giving thriller. That's what it's giving. Physical appearance is what you like. Like a lot of people have said that to me because I wear like wearing the big Afro mohawk and the gauges and the things like that. Like they're yeah. like me just doing that. I'm like, well, I like that because it's, it's it gives me a little bit more personality, gives me a little bit more yeah. style, flair type of thing, right? Yeah. But people look at you like you know, you're you're projecting you're projecting an outward appearance that you like. What do you think when somebody looks at you? What do you think they're looking at? And I'm looking at it like, well, I would think that they think that I'm a cool type of hipster, maybe like rock kind of kid type of thing. One, you're not a kid. Two, I don't think a, a curly mohawk is going to give you rock stars and the gauges are not giving like <laughs> that is not giving all of the things that you might be thinking. But that's how yeah. that's where I'm personifying as or that's what I'm projecting it as. But sometimes are the projections that you want or you're putting out there are are those reflective of what you're really trying to put out there? Because right. some people, some people want to turn into a tiger. The guy, he literally does everything, and now he's a tiger. Yeah. He's a human man tiger, and that's what he wants the world to look at him. The more things that he can change about him to be closer to what a tiger looks like, he's the guy. He's a tiger. He will be a tiger at one point. You know what I mean? Mm. Humans love body modification. I mean, me and Joey are pierced for the gods. Like I have piercings, you just can't. See them. Oh. I'm not going to show my Prince, Prince Albert. Well, right now. But <laughs> but I mean, but but here's my question though for Ty. Ty, when are you coming over to the dark side with me and Joey? When are you getting some uh some, piercing? some, some piercings? Yeah. I mean, I got my I got my ears here, you know, we got this, you know, the little you I know, mean, you know, that's that's here. I'm but I'm talking like, you know, you know, something a little more, you know. Edgy Intense. with the edginess. Yeah, right? where's the edge? Yeah, I always feel like my tattoos are the edge. That's like yeah. where I get my like that. But honestly, it's it's I don't know what I would get or where. Because like we said, like you know, like for what like out insert inward appearing outwardly, I don't know what else I would do, like besides my ears, maybe get something up here. I thought about a nose ring. I've had thought about a nose ring, but I'm like it's all cute and shit, but like, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and then That's I thought about a dermal, you know, right here. I, I honestly, it's one of the things of the care. Maybe eyebrow, like, maybe Kai. Maybe eyebrow. Okay. Okay. I never thought about this. The aftercare, it. I'm yep. terrible because even this, when I got my ears up here, this one got affected because I just like leaving it not really cleaning it properly. So yeah, you got some yeah, yeah. somewhere else. I'm like, Oh, I don't know if I can handle that pain. <laughs> so, well, but yeah. I thought about it. It's honestly, it, it's on the list, but it's like, I'd rather go more like tattoos and get the whole like half body full sleeve and all that before I get another piercing. Like I'd rather go need the needle for a tattoo before I'll get a simple boop. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, I've yeah. gotten the more that I'm getting older, the less I want to get tatted. It's like, it was fun at 20, whatever. Like I, I might want to do it, but it's not like I, I'm not rushing to do it like I used to. Like there's no like gotcha. it's a tattoo. You know, um, yeah, the thrill, the thrill of the needle is gone at this point. Like yeah, if I were to get one, it yeah. wouldn't it wouldn't tantalize and tease me like it used to. My it's, body is I don't have any. and I do mm -hmm. what I, <laughs> I have any tats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so I'm the canvas because I don't have any tattoos. I could never decide on what I, you know, wanted to put on me permanently. And I mean, they have these new tattoos. They're called um, eph uh, ephemeral. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's right. It's right here. But they're tattoos that they last for probably 12 to 15 months and then they feed like they feed naturally. Like they just just your body just absorbs it. And I thought about getting one of those mm. um, just to see how like something would look. But piercings for me have always been the thing. Like I've had like mm. quite a few different piercings. Like when I was younger, I had this thing in here pierced. But mm -hmm. um, the aftercare kind of freaked me out because I said to the guy, OK, so how do I clean it? And he's like, oh, just, you know, some warm water. And I'm like, OK, you mean like warm water on the outside he's like no you can just spin water through. through it and i'm like <laughs> yeah no th so that lasted like a week i got that that taken out i mean but um yo uh Aunt bootsy guess what kai's getting his eyebrow pierced uh, <laughs> crazy yeah <laughs> not accepted in the black community maybe okay no nah, but but remember yo it's, it's crazy because we're talking about body modification you remember guy uh star um, um wrote in about her boyfriend her fiance coming home from prison with the speed bumps in his penis. So I mean, yeah. How did he get that in prison? That's a lot of so, a lot of questions with that speed bumps. Too many in questions. Well, she left. Well, listen, she left him. They, they, you know, she, she left him. But um, yeah, it was like, did he put him in? Did somebody else put them in? Like, it did just so many questions. And then mm -hmm. your man is coming out of prison with this. What and then my first you? question Why, was, he, "What was you doing in there?" Was boy? was he in South America? And she's like, "No, he was in Coxsackie." And I'm like, "We all know Coxsackie, you know, it's upstate." And I'm like, "They're doing this at Coxsackie? Like, what's going on in the Kisaki. prison system?" <laughs> He's from. Listen, Kai's from upstate, so Kai knows how to pronounce all that stuff. We have an eclipse coming up on Monday, so listen. This is the total solar eclipse. If you remember, we had a total solar eclipse back on. Uh, August twenty August twenty first, twenty seventeen. So now the difference between this total solar eclipse and the last one is the path of totality, where viewers can see the moon totally block the sun, revealing the sun's total at, uh, the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. Now the corona will be much wider during this total solar eclipse than it was during the eclipse in twenty seventeen. As the moon orbits Earth, its distance from our planet varies during the twenty seventeen uh, total eclipse. The moon was a little farther away from Earth than it is, than it will be <laughs> with the upcoming solar eclipse. I'm sorry, Kai, I got distracted because you turned your lights off. Like you had oh. the eclipse behind you. <laughs> is it north? Is it still north or is it south, uh, more southern then? Because before it was really, it was up north a lot. So what it looks like is it's, it's taking a different path. So before it was coming from northwest to southeast. And this time it's going from southwest to northeast. So the thing about that is, um, you know, with it being a wider path, it's going to cross, uh, uh, pass over more cities and more den densely populated areas than it did in 2017. Okay. And they're saying that an estimated 31.6 million people live in the path of totality this year, compared to only 12 million in 2017. So um, me, Joy, and Kai, we all live in the tri-state. So now Kai's from upstate New York. And um, right. the deal with, with Upstate is they're in the path of totality. So they're going to get total darkness during this eclipse. So now where the three of us are right now, we'll probably be only in like 90 to 95% total darkness, which is still pretty dark. Um, but listen to me, folks. Be safe if you're going to go out there and watch this celestial event. And make sure you have alternate means of communication. Because those solar flares are going to be lit. <laughs> See what I did? See what I did. Right. <laughs> but anyway, the museums are handing out uh, free eye safe eclipse viewing glasses. I know that um, AMNH, um, American Museum of Natural History, is, um, but check with your local museums for info. Now, if you're in New York, uh, the eclipse starts at 2.10 p.m. and it reaches maximum coverage at 3.25, ending at 4.36. And I know some schools and jobs are doing early, early dismissal. So if you can, go down and see it because the next one isn't until 2020, 20, 2044. Now I'll be a grandfather by then, you know, talking about, yeah, my, my, my daughter is married an extraterrestrial. <laughs> you know, this, this is how it is. We want to send our condolences to, to all the, the people who lost loved ones 
in the tragic bridge collapse in Baltimore last week. Um, the bridge opened in 1977 as the I-695 Outer Harbor Crossing and carried over 11 million vehicles daily. Now, the bridge collapsed last Tuesday, shortly before 1.30 in the morning after a container ship that had lost power collided one of its support pillars. And uh, I've driven over that bridge like several times, and I know people who traveled it daily. And I just couldn't imagine, you know, a bridge just collapsing like that. I mean, drive over a bridge here like every day just about. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's very... It's very surreal. Uh, Maryland Governor Wes Moore has been out there on the scene ever since. So shout out to him and shout out to the bridge workers who stopped traffic from going over the bridge after the collapse. So definitely that's a that's a big deal. How do you deal with that? Like if you're right at the bridge and they stop it, how do you how do they get you back? They were doing construction on the bridge as it was, because typically, you know, they do construction overnight and it mm. was 1 30 in the morning. So when it had happened. Some of the bridge workers ended up, you know, falling to their deaths. They ended up in the river. But the ones who were at the bridge approaches, they were able to turn the cars around and block traffic. It was crazy about that because my my girlfriend, she got stuck behind. Like there was like a four to five car pileup that she was in standstill traffic for about two, three hours. So I was thinking about it like because, you know, every once in a while you'll hear about a story in California or the San Bernardino yeah. Yeah. mountains yeah. going crazy where it's, there's a real big pile up and then people are stuck in their car for like a week and something like that. Like, I'm like, what if I got stuck on the oh, highway? And like, yeah. how am I like, you supposed to wait out the storm? And I'm like, what if you don't got no water or anything? Like, am I just supposed to like, what am I supposed stuck to do in my car? car? That like, happened in yeah. Atlanta a few, uh, 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 several years ago. They had a they really bad You should always have an emergency kit in your car. Do you have your emergency kit, guys? Make sure you have one. I do. I don't. I actually don't. Do you have yours, Kyle? For my Minneapolis days, I have a case of or half case of this play time, a blanket, um, and like a little, like, at least a flashlight. Because in Minnesota, when it gets like, say your car can't start and you're stuck in the highway or snow, you got to stay warm until you can get, you know, bailed out. So this is something I always just keep in a like little emergency road kit. Like, let me go to the trunk. And then, you know, even have, I have an emergency bottle back there. Just in case. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I need no, 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 no. I you never need thought it. about you that until it. you never think you never need it until you really need it. And I was you like, wow, that's really yeah. need it. And you're like, oh geez. And then it's just a matter of like, how do I entertain myself? Do I got the make sure you get the chargers ready, right? In the car. Sure everything goes well. But yeah. But shout out to Mayor Brandon Scott to and everybody in um and Mayor Scott. I'm going to lean in on you just a little bit. I like you. I'm, I'm just going to lean in. It's a good lean in. Continue to remind those CMYK 0.0s why you're in office. Because the FFF, FFFs be getting out of control and they don't even live there. They don't even live in Baltimore, but they're worried about him because of how he got elected into office. Like, hey, I don't know. But anyway, Switching gears, man, people out here shooting their shot on LinkedIn, right? <laughs> man, Diddy. Oh, yeah, he going to jail. My boy going to jail, jail, jail. You can't feed somebody mad ketamine and don't think that you're not going to jail, bro. She said that she'll never remember again. She'll never remember the same way ever again. And that's what Cassie said. And then Young Miami doing cocaine. It's a hell of a drug, dude. So it's just a lot to take in. I mean, it's it, I think it's interesting when there's rumors, but then they get solidified. You're like, damn, who do we not believe or who was trying to tell stuff? And we just said, ah, ah, ah. But I think it's, it's a I look at this as a shift of society because you know, even the term, you know, how we used to say the word like gay, meaning not gay, but a different thing, but now it's like offensive. Now the fact of people are coming out, the fact of like, I feel my story is believable or it's something, and now you're getting that like. Yo, people are going, and I think for you to have federal indictments, like that means like they've been building for a while. I have a Diddy story for you guys, but I'm not going to tell it on here because he's still he's still out. So I'll share my Diddy story when I hit stop in recording. But um, gangs are still running Haiti, and Cinnamon is being recalled for land. I heard about that, sir. Yeah, the whole thing you know what else is crazy, Joey? KFC is selling chicken breast with pepperoni pizza on top. Oh, yeah, that's silly. <laughs> that's silly. And you know what else? You know what's crazy, Kai? 
Burger King is selling liquor on DoorDash. That's cool. I can see Wait, that being a thing. No, That's kind of cool. Ooh. Yo, let me get a Jack and Coke with my Whopper. No, Come on, dude. no, do it's not cool. You know why it's not cool? Because you know where my mind goes? My mind goes back to David Hasselhoff, drunk as a skunk, eating that Whopper on the floor. Mm. That's where my mind goes. That was That's Baywatch right there, though. That's Baywatch. David it's Hasselhoff. not cool. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> he's, yo, yo this, Hasselhoff. people in Germany love that guy. The Germans love oh, him. He's a natural yo, yo, you know what's crazy? So so he had an R&B album back in the day. Like a pop R&B type album. And and I remember watching his concert on like TV on like a Saturday afternoon. I was on Punishment. And I'm like, oh, who is this white man that he's jamming? This is David Hasselhoff. Damn, yeah, Bob's like it was. Anyway, um, listen, it's April. Black Jenga season is about to start back up again. So, so you know about Black Jenga, right? Do y'all know what Black Jenga is? I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. I'm here to smile and be. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? No, you're going to know exactly what it is once I tell you. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for Black Jenga? Mm -hmm. So Black Jenga is when you're at a cookout or any other gathering with Black folks. And they keep stacking the trash on top of the trash. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Instead okay. of just dumping it. Uh, yes. I so see. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whoever puts the trash on top and it tips over, they got to dump the trash. So that's okay. Black Jenga. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I've never seen I've never that. That's that. Oh, so that's, that's Black Jenga. You heard it here first on the Chris David Show. And um, we're also coming out of Women's History. So um, shout out to all the women. We love you. I still have my post up from uh, last year, uh, you know, from Women's History Month. So they're on my IG. So, you know, um, definitely check them out if you have a chance. Go on IG, check those out. A lot of wonderful women. Um, some of you guys uh, asked me too, like, what happened with the cashier at Walmart who was um, assaulted on Black Friday? She actually ended up not pressing charges. So that's okay. that. I mean, re retail is crazy. I mean, we've, we've all worked retail. You know, Kyle, you work retail, right? Did you? Have, yeah, you work I did. Uh, I, was, I was the best CVS cashier. Where? You know, <laughs> cashier Wait a minute. Was. What CVS? Not the CVS on on Washington. No, 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 not that, that one. Off the one off of off the cross street for St. Peter's. Oh, oh, okay. The college ghetto CVS. No, that was not too bad. It's uh, I feel it's worth white suburban, but the one near Delaware Avenue. Oh, okay. Where my family's from? That was the one. I was like. Oh, you robbing, robbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you stealing, stealing? You yeah, stealing, stealing. <laughs> Yeah, they stealing. <laughs> nah, yeah. I, my retail experience is always, like, more so, like, like big box. I can't do anything with food because, nah, I, I don't want you to be like, you touched this, you did like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Joey, what about you? What about you? You ever work, you ever work retail? You work retail, right? I worked retail. I did. I worked at American Eagle, best denim specialist in the Northeast. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I worked. Yeah, I think that was mostly my retail. I also worked at a carpet store. I worked at uh, at Harry Cat's Carpet. Shout out to uh, Long Island, New York, Mineola. Um, yeah, he was the one that gave me my first. Yeah, they were, that was my first job. So they let a they let a young kid just play around in the showroom, put the <laughs> carpets away. And um and then when they yeah they needed a little bit of heavy lifting they had to do that but basically I was there to clean up take naps on the furniture and that was about it get to hang out with the old timers they were okay. actually pretty chill they were pretty chill. Yo, this show was magical, man. Because wasn't I just talking about Oriental rugs and then you mentioned that you worked at a carpet store? I did. I did work at it. I worked there. That's and crazy. Then also we were going to talk about me doing working on a catering cruise ship, which was a definitely a different experience. But okay, okay. what was that yeah. about? I gotta know this. Yeah, so basically, if you have a little function like uh, uh, the kids' uh, boat day, you know, uh, senior senior boat trip, yep. you'd go to the marina, you'd load the kids <laughs> on, and then yeah. I was the I was the <laughs> one that was bringing stuff. Because the kitchen, of course, is in the hole in the under deck. Mm -hmm. So you have to basically, you have to climb up these really steep steps with the food, or basically you hand it up, they'll bring it up, and then you serve the tables, and it's mm -hmm. it's what you think of any catering hall, except that right. it's a floating a uh, floating catering hall. So that was cool. I worked at this photo lab in Target, and the photo lab was crazy. Like, I mean, 
all kinds of pictures used to come through the photo lab. Oh, I bet. So, it was just one time. This is one situation. This is this this was wild. It really wasn't like looking back on it. Like today, it's really not that wild. But back then, like it was like, oh, like what the hell? So this one day, I come in from from you know, I was in class, and then I you know came to do my shift, and she's like, Chris, Chris, you got to see these pictures. You got to look at these pictures. And I'm like, okay, like can I put my book bag down first? Like what the hell? Oh. So so. Yeah, All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so Kai knows where I'm going with this. Kai knows where I'm going with this. Okay, so, you know, I'd I, I start looking at the pictures. So, like, this 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 girl dropped off these one-hour photos because we did one hour and we did overnight. So she drops off these one hours. And I don't know if, if the guy was, like, her man or if it was just, like, some random guy. or I don't know what the story was. But Ooh, okay. it's like this guy in the photos, and he's like this, like really, like buff, like stripper-looking guy. And so the first picture, I'm just like, okay, like he has his shirt off, he has jeans on, like cowboy hat. What the hell? And then like there's this last picture, and dude is like just like full, just full frontal, just like everything is out. And so she's like, oh my god. That motherfucker got too much dick. No, and, I'm like, wow. yeah. and I'm like, so our other co-worker comes in, and, and by this point, like the girl had already came to pick up her pictures or whatever. The pictures were gone. And so Miss Betty, Miss Betty is trying to like describe to the girl what the guy's stuff looked like. So she goes. You ain't had to see that shit. Motherfucker had a dick this long. <laughs> this motherfucking thing. When they hand down the baton, gave them the baton, like, here, use it how you shot. And pay a tribute. Yeah. That was a tribute. Yeah, but the photos, that was it. <laughs> that was a tribute. <laughs> so before we go, um, Beyonce's uh, country joint, the Renaissance Act 2, Cowboy Carter, came out last Friday. Um, so since Act 2, this is what I want to know from you guys. So since Act 2 is heavily country influenced, what do you think her act three is going to be? Anything she wants it to be. So right now I was talking about that. So this is when you hit the pinnacle. Like, you know, when you've done everything, like, like the most famous, like Brad Pitt, he probably, he probably stops acting because like, once you're a soup, like once you hit the highest, once you're the apex of that type, like there's no, like she's almost at the point where she's like, Beyonce is already goaded. Like one of the greatest or is the greatest or whatever, however you want to describe her. At this point, she's just doing stuff because for the art of it, for the crab. Like, if this is not her best album, it doesn't matter. Like, I had I had a hundred number one hits already. Like, an another number one hit, whether it does good or not, won't matter to me because I'm at the pinnacle of success. Like, Andre 3000, they're like, when are you going to start rapping again? I'm done with rap. I want to play the flute and do other music because we already did that. We already, I already had, like, Drake and the rest of these guys, after I have 700 Grammys, like, if I want to make a quirky song with 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 the new country singer, then I'm gonna do that. Like, there's nothing stopping me. And you also like don't limit these people's freedom. Like, she wants is Beyonce a country singer? Now she is. No one will say she's a country singer, but if you want to, if you want to look at her as a country singer, she you can she has the right to whether you agree like whether you like it or not. She's she made a country song, and people like Beyonce country music. So. Like I said, this is when you're super successful and super talented and you have nothing else to do with your time but just to try other shit. So go for it. I'm all for it. No, one thing I love about this, it's what things you read online, but just also I love her. This is a this is her get back. This is her lick. So 2016, when she was at the CMA Awards with the Dixie Chicks and she performed, uh, they got so much hate because they're like, oh, Beyonce's not, you know, countries, whatever. Then they actually took down her performance because the comments that they were spewing, spewing. And the lead singer for the Dixie Chicks said they hated that because for them, that was one of the best weeks ever. They're like, we appreciate Beyonce's work ethic because being able to, well, perform with her one thing, but like, see how she worked. They're like, we gained a whole new understanding and following of this woman. So based off of how the negative experience, I think she's been plotting this for a while when she ever could to say, now technically my shirt registers as country. So, and if I have the biggest country album of the year, what the CMAs, you got to do something about it, right? And even 
the fact of even if it's not the album, the fact that she's featuring country artists, the black country artists on her tracks, it falls into the category. So I think it's one of those genius moves like you hurt me, died, whatever years ago, and now I'm coming back. Uh, but I think it's also the creativity, right? The thing is, apparently she had this before Renaissance, but she wanted to the world needed Renaissance act one before she got this one. It's a I think it goes to the fact of who she is as an artist, the fact that she can do so much because her voice lends to it too. Cause most artists like I can't. I love K. Michelle. She has a great voice, but we can't put K. Michelle on happy songs. <laughs> she, it wasn't work, but it's just a testament. But I think it's also you put out two back-to-back albums. You go on tour. She's gonna need a break at some point. I think it set up that break. But Act Three, there is one. I say she probably goes more. Um, you know, Caribbean, Afro beats. Be, if you remember, even though the Lion King live action movie wasn't the best, that mm-hmm. album We Are King or what is attached to it, Black is King. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, people loved it. So it's this creative genius. Her team's great. She knows what she's doing. She knows to keep people captivated. It's just a range of emotions where, and even if you aren't the biggest Beyonce fan, the songs, for what I've been listening, because I've had people as soon as the midnight come down, like, yo, you gotta fucking listen to this. I'm like, yo, she's doing her thing. So I appreciate this. And it's interesting because Jay Z knew she was sitting on this and he presented Album of the Year. <laughs> the Grammy was like isn't oh, that man. crazy <laughs> but he, knew, he, knew, he knew but yeah. I think it's just I'm happy that this moment's happening for her for us because it's it, it goes to show that the versatility of black people we are not monolithic we're not in a box the fact that we can do things and make it great it's almost the fact of people keep gatekeeping shit from us because they know we come in and we're going to do it I'm happy in my lifetime where I actually got to see Beyonce's transformation because there's a lot of greats that you see later on like Michael I don't appreciate I didn't get to appreciate his early stuff you know even off the wall it wasn't until you know he was well Kyle you weren't here yet like what do you mean yeah, he was in the <laughs> 70s yeah he was going crazy in the 70s so he's yeah. he grew up with like my mother and them he grew up with their generation to always I'm getting, that I'm getting we are not alone and I'm like seven trying to say like what's going on here who's Lisa Marie Presley yeah yeah so, so wait a minute. You mentioned Lisa Marie. Fun fact about Lisa Marie Pre- Presley: if you have the Janet Jackson album called "The Velvet Rope," mm-hmm. yeah, there's an interlude on "The Velvet Rope," no way. and she's talking to another woman, and the woman says to her, "Your coochie's going to swell up and fall apart." That's Lisa Marie, Marie Pre- Presley who says that. <laughs> Your coochie's going to swell. Up. But um, so here's the deal. So for Black Music Month last year, Black Music Month, um, for all of you who don't know, is in June, um, um, every June. Um, I did an interview with one of the founders of Black Music Month, uh, Ms. Deanna Williams. And it's fun talking with her because she's highly intuitive and she always knows the direction Listen, music is going country, to take. Black country artist, Brittany Spencer is one of my clients and she is a hip hop artist, I'm sorry, a country artist from Baltimore who lives in Nashville. Rissy Palmer, uh, Mickey Guyton, and, and a woman named Frankie Staten, who was the pioneer, grown woman, close to my age, uh, Frankie Staten. Um, yeah, there's a great documentary uh, if you love country music, uh, and this focuses on Black country artists. It's called For Love and Country, For Love of Country. For Love of Country, I believe it is, uh, yeah. There's a wonderful woman named Trina Furby, who a lot of people should know. Trina is, she is the incarnation of Sister Rosetta Tharp. She plays the guitar, she performs. Trina Furby, love her. Wow, you mentioned Kay Michelle earlier. And the thing with Kay Michelle is, she's been doing country indirectly for like her entire Ooh. career. And she had an album out about 10 years ago and it was called uh, Anybody Want to Buy a Heart. And that album cover is, anyway. Shout out to K. Michelle. And uh, the street single, because, you know, I'm yeah. everywhere. You know, I'm all over. The street single was a record called Going Under. And it's like a mid-tempo rap record. It's kind of trappy, but the lyrics are sad without resolve, which has all the makings of a country record. Because mm. if you listen to country music, country music's very sad. But, you know, I like how she plays with different genres. Like, none of her music is symmetric. And right. um, she samples right. the message on the hook. But I hope, though, with Beyonce going down this country road, it'll open up listeners to 
some of the other black artists who are out here doing country, and they have been for some time, like uh, Linda Martell, who is actually, she has a record with Linda on, on the new album. Um, she's one of the first, she was the first successful black female country artist. But I think Beyonce's act three, if I had to like do a prediction, I think it'll be hip hop. Like some people have been saying rock, that she's gonna go in rock direction. Some people have been saying, you know, she's gonna go back to strictly R&B. But I mean, I just think that she's she's gonna be, she's gonna do rap. She's gonna be, you know, trap B. Like I really do. I think she's gonna do a rap thing. Um, and speaking of rap, we do we had a game, but I'm, we're gonna play it next time because we're running out of time. What did you guys think of the Super Bowl, though? Because I mean, we haven't been on in a long time, so I mean, I gotta ask you. I mean, that's Urshan. Like that man went off, and the fact of what I don't like about a lot of new music is I don't see the longevity happening. I see a lot of things are you know produced crazy good production, but I don't see it being here in five, six, seven years. The fact that Usher has been doing this since sixteen, but like he was able to do his, I mean, he did he did his hits, he even do all his hits. I remember one of the more things like he did Superstar, I'm surprised, but it's one of those things. Where it was such a great show to understand. Like that's a true act. Like part of me wish I would have went to the residency to see artistry what it is because they don't turn about the way they used to, right? Someone that can dance sing, hit the notes, give you actually a show versus a performance. And that's why I really got that. Like, I tuned in and I'm like, yo, this man got it. Still, never lost it. Even still making new music that still works for today's sound, but the fact that he's still keeping his individuality behind it. I am literally impressed. Like, that's what I, was, what I wanted for the, that's why I wanted for the Super Bowl. The game was whatever, you know, ain't no Cowboys in it, so we good. But, <laughs> hey, yo, oh. yo, yo. <laughs> so, yeah. this is Joe, what about you no yeah like i said usher usher is a legend and the way he the way he grabbed alicia butt like she gave him the look like if i was swiss beats i'd be like yo stop putting your hands on my girl but me and you are cool we're cool with the dog but watch your hands you're getting a little handsy with my girl but other than that like i said he's the he definitely gave the resident yeah he definitely gave the vegas show for the people like he gave everybody the vegas show because if that's what he's given on in Vegas, then yeah, that is that's a performance, and that's why that's why he'll stand above like going to like one of the one of these other rap shows because they're not giving you a show; they're just giving you them rapping on top of their already pre-recorded tracks, and you just see them just jumping around and things like that. Like yeah, like no, I, they the reason why Beyonce is getting sold out shows and multi city deals is because when she gives a show, you're not only going to get the production you're going to get the lights you're going to get the costume changes you're going to get this and that you're going to get the bells and the whistles you're going to so, get an experience yeah and an that's experience. it that's what I, like i'm not that's the biggest beyonce want. fan but everybody that went to that concert in philly were like oh that was a show that was a oh my mm -hmm. god like oh my yeah. god like okay yeah. that means there has i mean to be and she is there. she's her the two of them i i the two of them i i refer to her as female usher and i refer to him as male beyonce no, because yeah. the two of them give their performance they give a show like and i think they are the last of those types of performers that, mm -hmm. that really give a show i saw beyonce um years ago probably 20 years ago at the guard todd mentioned uh superstar that record superstar and it, it was it was so surreal watching usher and then just seeing all of the black people in the audience singing along to that because mm -hmm. that's like one of those records that like just resonates with black folks. Like, I feel like that's one of our like software updates. Mm. You know, when you hear Superstar, like we all know the words to that. I mean, I, honestly, I wasn't feeling the game itself. So, I mean, I had to see my guy. Like I had to see him do his big one. And shout out to the noobs, um, yep. you know, who, who performed in the show. Cause they, they were there, they were performing, dancing with him. But who do you think is going to perform next year? A good question. It could be any. Yeah, it could be anybody. That's like a, whatever's gonna make them the most money, basically. Because it could be anybody hot. It can be somebody who's trusted and true. That right there can be anything. They could if Glorilla and and uh, and Sexy Red if they if they get enough uh, American appeal, they'll put them as a the next time show. You know what I mean? It's just is this who's popular and who can who can who 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 can you put on that that's gonna make. 10 million, 500 million, or whatever that number is. How are you going to make that many people tune into your halftime show? You know what's going to be interesting? Honestly, I think about how this election will go. 
Mm. Like, are we going to talk politics now? You already did. I already covered that. No, That's done. It, I think basically I'm done with politics like, for the day. The NFL has always been, you know, tuned to the likes and things of white America. So if it goes one way, I think they're going to go back to like, I, I don't, you know, I was like to see Jelly Roll. I want to see Jelly Roll do it. Um, it might be a country year against some artists, but I think it's actually yeah, shifted Ed back Sheeran to... is definitely a front runner for sure. Ed Sheeran or somebody like something like that. But, but you know, I don't think I don't think like the, the rural whites like Ed Sheeran like that. Okay. That's like that. It doesn't say it's like who like, I think his popularity has waned. Like his time probably to do that was was probably six, seven years ago. Mm. It's definitely you know I mean? like, like I, a nineties like yeah. rock band, unless you get like Justin Timberlake coming back to do it with NSYNC or something. Yeah, no. but they do that also just for fun. Like, yeah, we, yeah. Let's uh, let's give Justin another show. Let's let's have it one more time. More money for Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah let's do it. For <laughs> sure. But honestly, I think they're gonna, they're, they're yeah. shifting the time. Like, this is a fun. It's been cool, but they got to shift back to their major fan base in some way, shape, or form. And I but you think, know, yeah, that fan base is dying off too. No, oh, that's actually true. Oh. Joey, you mentioned something um, earlier when you were talking about that that Villanova uh, 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 Creighton game, uh-huh. and um, you were talking about those those two basketball players looking biracial. Yeah, one was a That's no, one was a white kid. The other kid was yeah. Oh, one was white and one was biracial. Yeah, he but was biracial. if you look at the NBA, if you look at the NBA, you look at some like not a lot of the NFL, but you look at a large portion of it, it's biracial. That's where things are kind of going um but that's another thing for i'm writing this stuff down because this is all stuff i want to revisit in the future on future shows but like um so here's here's why i think lizzo mark my words i act i i see i i see it lizzo unless because you know she's like i'm gonna quit and all this other stuff but i i right but then she's also losing weight she's doing different i've heard rumors yeah she's doing different things with her sound so she may come back out you know toward the middle or the end of the right. year because we're still kind of in the beginning of the year but she sure. may come back out and everybody loves her again and then she's on stage in february i don't i don't know mm-hmm. Lizzo, we know not everybody loves her enough to put her on a main stage like that now, now listen the wives of the people who like the nfl yeah. they love lizzo lizzo is very big in the, in the suburbs I don't know why Taylor Swift. Big in the Taylor Swift. Travis Kelsey, Taylor. Did Taylor she already Swift. have one? No, I don't think I've never seen a Taylor a Taylor game. I don't know, but while we're talking about music, though, what happened to verses? Like that's literally like the only thing from the we're pandemic that I missed. We're outside of quarantine. That's the only that was thing I missed from the special. pandemic. It's like a Tory Lane. Yeah, that's like asking what happened to Tory Lanes. Oh, we know what happened to, to Tori. His own fault. That was his own fault. Yeah, we know what happened to Tori. But Kai, what, what, yo, what, what? Do you remember, what you think of Versus? When you, you watch Versus, right? You watch Versus. <laughs> I did. And it was what the culture needed because it's all those back of the school table, all those different conversations. We always had like, who was better than this? You know, who's mm-hmm. that? And I think I really understood that. You understand what what people had catalogs and people what people had time to sound. Sometimes we're not one of the same. Like I look at the one between who had a deeper appreciation for, but I think I didn't really get it because of up north. Ludicrous. Going hypocritical against Nelly because I was like, oh, Nelly was cool and all that. But I'm like, yes, Nelly had sweatsuit of country hawk and all that before. But like going through Ludicrous's collection, like he has something for everything. And I really appreciate that I got to discover. We discover artists all over again for the first time. Like, I actually go back and say, like, oh, I knew what songs were released, but I never owned a Ludicrous CD. I just, whatever was on the radio or whatever, MTV jams, but it allowed me to go back and understand artists a little bit differently. And I love seeing the actual, like, I love seeing our community embrace and have fun. Again, the best show ever, though, was uh, the Lops versus Dipset. And you can't tell me Jada ain't top five now for that. Like, yeah, but also like I think that was scary. like it, it brings a good. <laughs> I was competition. scared. It brings a good competition, but also it brings that like, also like some artists are like like with the what was it the Keisha Cole Ashanti Ashanti. One was, so um, that one guy that one went astray because like Keisha thinks that I'm black. You know what I mean? It's like a, my status. It's a status thing. Like. 
Well, I'm just yeah. as important as like first of all, Ashanti has way more music than you, Keisha. So you can't be like I'm a bigger celebrity or star. Like you know what I mean? Now you starting. To, Drake doesn't want to do a Chris Brown versus because my my thing. I you know what I mean? Chris Brown is like my catalog. I've been doing this for 20 years. You're gonna have to bring somebody that has 20 yeah. years worth of material to to even come and talk to me because you put in me. You putting the the temptations and the what you call on that same platform makes sense. Like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and what you call it together, that makes sense. You putting Nelly versus Ludacris, I can most likely make sense. You know what I mean? Now, right. if you have somebody that's too famous, then it's not going to start making sense anymore because, like, you can't. Who are you going to play against Chris Brown? Chris Brown has too many albums, too many songs, and every song now the newer ones he's giving you forty songs per album. Like, you know, he's, on his, <laughs> he's on his Afrobeat. Yeah. yeah, you know, for me though, like I, I, I think the Mario or Marion was the last one I saw, and I mean, I ride for Mario. Shout out to him, but like, listen, that was Bobby V's night. He he had the crowd like just like in a trance, man. Yeah, he that was his night, like all the way. But but, but wait, what the hell was going on with Ray J and Sammy? Like it, it was giving cold. That's what I'm saying. They only had one song, so I don't even know how that was even a thing. How would they even think that would be a thing? You know what I mean? And and yeah. and why didn't he do? Wait a minute. Like wait a minute is probably like the most recognizable. I guess Ray J. Record That's the only Ray J. Song I know. <laughs> That's the well, only. no, you. He also had "Sexy Can I." That was okay, like big yes, too. That, that was that like his too. crossover yeah. hit. Yeah. But like, wait a minute, Mike, you couldn't, like, I was a teen, little teenager when that came out. Yeah, like, I remember that too. Tell me that, you know, I wasn't, right. you know, doing something with that me, record. Me. Exactly. Working all day, oh. in the club. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> all the night. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, Ray's, you know, but Ray, Ray J is so polarizing. Like, Ray's my guy. I like Ray J. But he just makes it hard sometimes for me to root for him. But, yeah. but this is the other thing. That's my other thing. Where was Lloyd? I mean, if you're gonna bring all the guys out, like where was Lloyd at? Like you go hard for Lloyd. You know Lloyd. Get, get, get young money. Show. Yeah, young oh, money. I don't know. I think he's still young money, so I don't know. That might be a whole different that might be a whole different production thing type of thing. Yeah. So he like, was on I, the I, uh, they did like the, the updated like scream tour with them adults. He was on that tour right. for the verses. Right. I, it's almost like because he's early, because you know, he was like other, you know, it was like he, he's in that room, but for some reason, I think he doesn't, he doesn't get the respect he needs, you know? So he, he doesn't. Gonna, he doesn't. It's like, he doesn't at all. Like, Lloyd, let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me say something <laughs> real quick. Let me say something real quick. Music producers, make Lloyd your muse. And specifically, yeah. Kate Renata, I'm talking to you. And I see you on that phone. <laughs> you ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> you better wear your Eclipse glasses, too. <laughs> anyway, sock passe K. No, no, but no, not not for nothing. Chris should have been on versus. Like I, I, I think him and Neo would have probably been like the, the craziest option. Like him and Neo would have yeah. probably that would have been crazy. Yeah, Neo. I don't know, but because do you still do you only do it from their past work or because like I said, Chris Brown is still making. He made eleven eleven. Yeah, you know, to Chris Brown concert tomorrow. He's still doing stuff. You know what I mean? Like I haven't heard Neo. Really? Neo had problems with his girl, and I watched that in the news. That's all I know about Neo. Now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. Is is different? He's not the same yeah. Neo that used to sing to me. You know what I mean? That I wanted to turn my ball to. I wanted to go bald and put on a fedora hat. You know what I mean? Like that's not. Joe, you wanted to go bald to put yeah, a for the fedora again yeah, from one again. So you try to say yeah, sexy can I? You know what I mean? Well, That's funny. Uh, you know, listen. I know I'm late. <laughs> I know I'm late. I don't care. Fight me, but you know, a shout out to, to Swizzy and Tim and, and bring verses back. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, yo, it's crazy because I'm like, I've been in this place where I live right now since like summer 2022, and I was thinking like, what have I missed watching since I lived here? And it was verses. And I mean, I don't really watch TV. Like TV to me, TV is very sad. Like that's why, like, I like. That you guys recommend shows and stuff because like actual terrestrial TV is just I mean outside of Abbott Elementary and like the neighborhood I'm watching Dabble and I'm watching reruns of Family Matters and Blackish while I'm oh yeah like, that's all day yeah you might as well watch yeah. non-stop ridiculousness like, I'm satisfied hours. with those four shows like I'm satisfied with those four shows like I'm satisfied 
Have you but have you watched Dabble? Do you know about Dabble? Uh, this is new. <laughs> so so okay. So I'm I'm gonna explain Dabble to y'all. So Dabble is this channel. If you have cable, it's actually on cable. And I don't know what the number is if you have Comcast or, or Optimum, but I have Files. Okay. And on Files, it's 482. And it's like they show the same shows all day. The Parkers, Moesha, The Game, um, Sister Sister, One on One, Half and Half, Girlfriends. Like, it's just like a constant rotation of like 90s uh, and 2000s. Right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, like a lot, a lot of those shows I missed too because like when they first ran, I was out of the club. So <laughs> I didn't get to see those shows, you know, um, at night. Like right, 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 right. And then there's this other channel I found. It's called um, Catchy Comedy. And they show Alf. Do you guys remember Alf? I remember Alf. Yeah, Alf. The, the, yeah, we had, yeah. Like, we had a puppet of Alf. Yeah, of the Alf character. Yeah. I, I, had, I had the puppet. That and puppet, I had his, yeah, uh, one, yeah. I had his poster. Speaking of, of uh, good and wholesome, um, IG went out again, apparently. Um, see? Keep telling y'all about those solar flares. Keep telling y'all. Yeah, I haven't been on IG in two months. That's another thing. Things to do to help your mental health, right? If you're sad. Unplug. Yes. If you're sad, stay off of IG. If you're sad, don't drink as much. Because you know what you do when you you know what you do when you're sad, you drink. But you know what drinking does? It makes you more sad. So do you want to be sad and drunk? That's never a bad comment. That's never a good comment. Ty, are you on IG right now? Ty, I'm gonna get get my belt. So listen, um, I only I, I listen. I only use IG for the show. You know I mean, I'm getting better. You know what I mean? Because I post like an annual thirst trap. You know, for on Chris David TV at least once a summer. But I mean, social media just as a whole is just not my thing. Like I'm not invested. Like clock app, bird app is not for me. Like even like MySpace. And like Black Planet back in the day, like for oh, me, mi like gente. yeah, me gente Asian Avenue, <laughs> like, but it was just never my thing. Like, I mean, TV and radio was social media for me. Like, that's how we found out what was going on. Like, video music box, like on Friday nights when you hear, you know, <laughs> like you know you're about to get your videos, your interviews, you know, whatever. <laughs> Whatever happened that week, like shout out to Uncle Ralph too. And I mean, Joey, you grew up so Joey, you grew up listening to Hot ninety seven in the morning, right? Like, mm -hmm, you used to listen sure. in the morning. Yeah, fun. So do you remember? Life. Okay, so so listen. Do you remember the time that Remy Ma was on Miss Jones? Do you remember Ms. that? Miss Jones in the morning. Yes. Yeah, I remember Jones. Yes. So Kai, Kai, you don't know this story, but I'm gonna tell no. you this story. I'm gonna tell you this. So this always stayed with me. So, so, so she's like, what do you mix with? How come you be sounding mad Spanish? And Remy goes, I'm black. And Jonesy's like, I know, but what else? And Remy's like, and more black. <laughs> Sorry. It was good. It was just so good. Like, like, how 97 was social media. And the, the crazy thing is, Kai, me and Joey had a similar moment because I was like, Joey, you can't yeah. freaking ain't you? And, and Joey's like, no, I'm Dominican and Cuban. And I was like, yeah, I'm the U.S. So like, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't figure out, you know, the gay, which the one or whatever. Gay, yeah, gay, you know, gay. Gay. like, figure out which one. But like, yo, so these, but it's funny, speaking of Hot 97, there's, there's this comedian, and his name is um, Jimmy Martinez. And he reminds me of Joey. But anyway, Jimmy used to be on the morning show at Hot, like, way back in, like, 02 or 03. So yeah. he's on YouTube. And he's telling a story about how him and Jaheim got into like this melee up at the station. They were like throwing computer monitors at each other, like old school computer monitors, not, not like what y'all used to today. Right. But like, Boop. then he has this other video <laughs> the where he's talking about LL. And like, yeah, it, it's just just crazy, man. Just like, uh, wait, so wait, shout it, out to Miss Jones. <laughs> shout out to Wendy. Guys, like, if you have a chance, like, catch a, check out Wendy's documentary. It was on Lifetime. It was really, really sad. Oh, Wendy Williams? Nice. Yeah. It was, it, it, I'll tell you guys about that later because I got to wrap this show. But anyway, just before we go, listen, listen. Wendy will always be one of my deepest, earliest radio inspirations. Like, I grew up listening to Wendy. She's one of my deepest references. Her and Flex. Love. 
Flex every night. Funk Master Flex. And it just, Funk Master Flex Mike. Yeah, exactly. he drops too many. I love Funk, but he be dropping too many bombs. Like, let this, because you'll wait until you have the perfect love bomb, the like, bombs. Yo, and then he'll I, bring it back. Like, no, America, I'm not ready for this right I now. I got the bombs, no, dude, Just play the song. I stole them from Flex. I broke into Flex's uh, studio and, and stole them from Flex. But the thing is, dude, this is the thing. It just vexes me that we have people out here today who are like emulating Wendy based on what they think she was. And so I just want to say to everybody, like, do me a favor. If you didn't grow up in the New York City tri-state or Philly or Charleston, where Fiona's from, who wrote the letter earlier, or Shreveport or Toledo or Columbia, South Carolina, I'm going to need you to leave it alone. And that's it. Leave it alone. Anyway. Joey, Kai, any any takeaways? I appreciate these cop- these type of conversations, the positivity, the mind of thought, the disagreement. It's just sometimes we get so wrapped up in the old world we create, we fail to look outside, and this is the moment of looking outside. Right, and then look outside, do the internal reflection of what's needed. But I yeah, I just appreciate this time like no other. Like this is something that's really really like I appreciate you for doing this. I appreciate Joey. I appreciate this as something for a safe space for black men to be, and this actually get to know each other outside the context of what the world expects us to do. Um, my takeaway is that, uh, like I said, I love the platform. I love being on here. I love just difference of opinion. It seems that we have more, like like everything, we have 90% of commonality things, just like all people. To the person next to you, you're probably 90% like, and then that 10%, what makes you different is what makes you unique. So hearing from your experience and then counteracting it with my experience and, and everybody else's having different outlooks on life, different places, different spaces it's so it's so interesting to see how we're alike but then also how different parts of our lives continue to just shape the direction that we continue to want to go in and then things that we would like to see let's have more inclusion and let's continue to like and lift and empower each other you know what i mean you know the bulk of our you know answering our time you know answering as the guys you know this was stood out for me was was questions dealing with some type of body image. Like it was Keisha and her nose, it was Jay with his weight. And, you know, both of them are young. So it's like, you know, younger than we are. And I can't help but blame social media, you know, for their their judgment. Like it's really, really dangerous. And I mean, really quickly, I saw this guy, like this fitness guy. He's popular on Insta. And he's like going up the stairs of like Union Square with a with a 300 pound barbell on his shoulders. Like during rush hour, you know, like just, I don't know. This is why I'm, I say, don't base your goals off of what you see online. Okay. And when we talk about algorithms, I know that the people who get pushed to the top are deceptively attractive. But me and Joey and Kai are how real men look out here in the real world. So just remember that. Yeah, we don't got perfect noses. We don't have perfect noses. We have regular... We got regular, you know what I mean? We got regular bodies. We we only look at a, a small amount of porn, not too much porn where it's a problem, all right? Oh, yeah, not you guys, all right? <laughs> but my brothers, thank you for being here. Everybody, Definitely. clap it up for Joey Black, a.k.a. Joey the Heckler, and our official Chris David Show mixologist, Mr. Joey Bastard, all right? And... Your favorite person's favorite person, Champagne <laughs> Cola Poppy, the Chunky Jaden Smith, Black Kina, Supreme Kai, LL Cool K, <laughs> Mr. Kai Thomas. <laughs> I'm your host, Chris David. I am a journalist and a cultural commentator. I'm blacker than a seafood feast bus trip. All of my monikers are below, all right? We are, and this is the Chris David Show. Guy Talk Men's Discussion Panel. If you or someone you know has a question for us, email us, info at thechrisdavidshow.com. Put Ask the Guys in the subject line. Um, real quick, my precious Nodula is an amazing seamstress and, and closing, clothing designer. Yep, I'm putting you and your, your clothing line on blast. Her uh, IG is covered by NB, all one word. She's still accepting need orders and she does all colors and sizes. So visit her page, check her out, and get covered by NB, the PHL seamstress. But hurry up before the price goes up and be respectful in her DMs because she's 17. I will swish cheese you. <laughs> okay. Real yeah, talk. No, I will swish you. No, 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 no weirdos. Yeah, no, weird. no weirdos. Like, seriously. Thanks for listening and watching. 
Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your doctor. Tell everyone in your LinkedIn DMs to follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at the Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. Be kind and be well. We're here on Temple's campus interviewing students about the outcome of the election. This year's presidential election was obviously quite historic. Not only did we elect the first African American man to the presidency, both new voter registration and voter turnout were higher than they have been in years. Most people felt very strongly about their choice of candidate before the election. In this election, is this your first time voting? Did you vote this year? Um, this actually is not my first time voting, but it was the first time that I was actually ex you know, thoroughly excited to vote. Why didn't you vote? Uh, I get this question a lot. Uh, I guess like the opportunity cost of it to me. Um, basically, you have to follow like uh, you have to follow the whole election, everybody's views and stuff like that. And I don't know. I really, I'm really kind of lazy, so I don't, I don't feel like following that. Did you follow the election closely? Yeah, I did. I kept up on the uh, status and tried to figure out who's on top. And um, it was that's why I was surprised with um, Obama's margin. Because I was a, it seemed like it was a pretty close race throughout the, uh, you know, the process of, you know, the debates, et cetera. So um, you came out on top, and that was great. How do you feel about the outcome? I was really happy, obviously, and I'm happy to see that a lot of people felt the same way, and that um, he won by a good amount of people. So now, had the other candidate won, how do you feel that your life would be different? Do you feel your life would be different, or how do you feel your life would be changed? I yeah, I absolutely think it'd be different. I think I'd probably be unhappy for the next four years. Uh, but I mean, I think Obama has a better a better idea of what the future should um, be like, and I, I don't believe McCain would have um, had the same effect. Like, how do you feel the outcome would have been? To be perfectly honest, it probably wouldn't have made much difference if McCain was in office. I mean, it's. Uh, one way or another, they're both politicians, so it's, I mean, it won't affect me quite as immediately, but I can see it affecting other things in the world, uh, I mean, a bit more. Now, are you going to follow the presidency as close as you follow the campaign? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Who did you vote for? Obama. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you vote for him? Um, I just feel like we needed a change, and I felt like all his views related to me, and that, you know, he had good plans for everything, so I voted for Obama. And now, if McCain would have won, how do you feel the outcome would have been? What do you think would be happening? Um, I think it would have been the same stuff as Bush, you know. He had the same views on Bush. He voted with Bush 90% of the time. So I think it just would have ended up the same. We would have been in war forever, you know. We would have been in your, Like he said, if it would have taken us 100 years to be in war, that's what it would take. So we would still be in war, you know. While everyone may not agree on the outcome of this year's election, it is clear that students are excited to see what the next four years has in store for them and the nation.